All right, welcome to the Sebe cast number 39 with Mr. Mammal, and I am beyond excited for this one. Mr. Mammal or Jordan, how you doing today? I am doing great. I am excited to be on the Sebe cast. <laughs> Congrats on doing over 30 of these. That's awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Like, there's only been a couple weeks that I haven't done a Sebe cast, but for the most part, and this is, this is a lot. For me because uh, i'm usually like a person that would procrastinate things like this or just mm, yeah get really lazy about it and just stop so this is definitely a project i've been working on that's like actually gone pretty well for that's good i mean yeah. it must be it must be, it must mean you enjoy them which is good oh i love them so much seriously like i think uh i think getting rig and dow on and then getting Paul on. Those were like two streamers that were just so big, I don't know, in my eyes, like watching them years and years ago. Right, right. Getting to talk to them like in a one on one conversation was just crazy to me. Like I I totally feel that. I know uh I don't I obviously don't want to like spoil any topics before we get too far, but like I, I feel the same way when I went to my first RuneFest. Like getting to like I guess I myself I'm a streamer, but it was still like unreal, like being there in person, I'm like, that's Bodie standing right there. Like, <laughs> oh my god, like, yeah, it's it's nuts. Yeah, no, I've never been to a RuneFest, and I'm like really wanting to go now. Just uh, and, and especially like yeah. as a content creator now, I, I guess that's got to just be a little bit more. Uh, I don't know. There's got to be a different feel to it, knowing that there's Extra people special. coming for like you as well, and you're also yeah. going for other content creators. So yeah, it's it's cool in both ways. Like like you said it's it's the weirdest thing when people come up to you and they're like hey man can i get an autograph i'm like <laughs> me like, me <laughs> like for for what like, you know it's weird <laughs> yeah very surreal though <laughs> so uh i'm gonna be honest with you i went onto your youtube last night and i okay. sorted from uh oldest <laughs> i don't know if you've ever done that like went to somebody's oh, channel I, oh god i have <laughs> Search by oldest and stuff. Anyway, I was watching a few. I just like clicked on a few and watched for a few seconds on us on some of them, yeah. and uh, it's just cool because sometimes I see YouTubers like big YouTubers and stuff and big streamers as like they started off and they just were like instantly big or whatever you know. Right, but right. It's a process, you know, and uh, it is. It, it was like humbling for me to see like okay, like sometimes I see my own stuff and I'm like, eh, like. Man, like, I'm not producing stuff that's on, like, this person's level, you know? Yeah, I know what you mean. Like, I feel the same way. Like, right now, whenever I watch a Guns Chili video, I just feel immediately bad about myself. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. This dude's editing is so incredible. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you know what I did see that was really cool? It's like, um, I scrolled up from, like, your oldest videos up until the Fire Cape video. And that Fire Cape video, okay. I kid you not, that thumbnail is nostalgic to me. The yeah, thumbnail it's, is. <laughs> yeah, I had a very consistent, like, old style of thumbnail, which, I mean, I, I think it's not nearly as effective because clearly it's not what people really do nowadays. But my thing was, like, big text at the top and the bottom and a cool picture in the <laughs> middle. Like, it's not bad. Yeah, it, it's, no, it's it, not, it's it not does bad. the job. Right. The, but that was, like, my thumbnails. Almost every video I made during that era was, like, that was my go-to right there. Yeah. <laughs> No, and uh, I mean, we, we don't even need to talk about thumbnails because my thumbnails are literally like a, a random screenshot of what I'm doing in the game and I don't put any work into it. Although, recently I'm starting to get into thumbnail making because I realize how big of a deal that is in YouTube. It is. It's really, really important. And I guess it, you know, it makes sense because it's it's the first thing that might catch somebody's eye. If, let's say they're not, you know, if they're not coming to your video from being subscribed to you, if they're coming from a recommended, you know, that's going to catch their eye on that sidebar. Yep. Uh, but, I mean, it, it it's crazy how sometimes, like, the simple ones work really well. Because I, I think about, you know, some of the biggest uh, OSRS YouTubers, you think of, like, Torvesta and Framed. Their thumbnails are, like, like a lot of, like, big Torvesta videos, it's like a screenshot of items in his inventory. Yeah. Like, it depends on the video, but, like, sometimes the really simple stuff works super well. Yeah, it's got to be just something that's, like, just pops out. And, yeah, it, it really doesn't matter if it's simple or complex. Well, I mean, it can't be too complex. But, like, I think it's just that right. thing that just pops out of you. You're like, oh, like, 
or if this is something that's been on my mind or something like yeah i wonder i wonder based off of that thumbnail what's gonna happen in this yeah. video like yeah <laughs> something like that and i gotta work on my clickbaiting skills a little bit more you know i mean <laughs> I, I I personally have gotten a little worse with it. I, I used to be strictly, so like my old videos were titled like Mr. Mammal 2007 Progress episode number. And that was it. Yeah. Like I just, I didn't, I didn't even like vary from that. And then when I started my hardcore series, I started giving them actual names based off of what happens in the video. I would say the upside is, like you said, when you put actual stuff, you can like clickbait a little bit more. The downside is you have to think of stuff, which sucks. It's sometimes it's so hard to think of a good title. It was so easy to just copy and paste Mr. Mammal progress video, you know? Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, I, I think of, like, I feel like my OCD kind of prevents me from that, but I need to just get out of myself and realize, like, okay, this would actually help my channel grow because sometimes, like, even my rambles, just like ramble one, ramble two, like ramble, like just right. that's it. And then right. I'll I'll say something, but it's it's not grabby enough, you know. And then the Sebe cast is just Sebe cast, and then the person's yeah, name, which yeah, it would work if it was you, and it would work if it was foe, and it would work if you know any guy that already has like recognition. But if it's somebody that sure that people haven't really heard of, you need to. Like, I listen to a lot of podcasts, and I listen to a lot on YouTube, and one yeah. thing they do is they don't even say, you know, say Baycast, or, like, they won't even say the title of the podcast. They'll just say the guest, and then five words that kind of summarize what they are talking about. And then the thumbnail says what the title of, like, the actual thing is, like, the podcast. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It, I guess it'd be like, let's say you were doing interviews of, like, you know... If, if you were interviewing, I don't know, some, like, famous actor, right, then the name would be enough to yeah. make people go, oh, I, I know that person. Yep. I want to see that. So, yeah, I, I know what you mean. And that was, um, I kind of struggled with it for a long time as well, where I just kind of felt, I felt like if I was going to do these, uh, you know, these titles that were like, you won't believe what I got, you know, type <laughs> stuff, or like, it, it <laughs> you yeah. know, it's cliche, but like, you see it, uh, I, I was just like, wow, I feel like people are really going to judge me for this. Mm -hmm. Like, they're, they're going to be like, oh, Mammal, Mammal change. You know, he's, I miss he's given into the clickbait. Yeah. Exactly. It's <laughs> so, and it's one of those things where you have to just get out of your own head and be like, if somebody actually likes you, they're not going to care that you're yeah. trying to put a better and, title on your video. If, if the content is the same. Exactly. That's the difference is like, is the actual content now just this shallow clickbait? content or is it the same content with a little bit more grab in the title yeah and if and if it's the same then you know people will recognize that and just go well i like the video anyway so i guess do what you gotta do you know yeah whereas if it <laughs> if it is here's a clickbait video it's 10 minutes and one second just so i can get the ads <laughs> like i mean you know people can tell people yeah. can tell okay so as we all know and everyone here now uh it ha is definitely aware of if you've ever fucking played this game or been on reddit or anything hd has come out 117 has produced an absolute masterpiece mm -hmm. and i'm playing on it right now as people can see unless you're listening to this on like spotify or something but um it looks amazing and i want to hear your thoughts on it uh there's a little bit of issues on my end where i like my poh is really laggy perif is a little bit unplayable, like at max settings, but everything yeah. else seems to be like insanely smooth, and it doesn't really take away from the game at all because you still got your rune light settings. Yeah, which you know, it's incredible that it's 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 working really well on my end as well, which is incredible because it's like a beta that just came out, yeah. <laughs> and it was made by one guy, <laughs> I know. one dude. I mean, that's insane. Like, that, that that's that, it's wild to think about. And it's made by one dude who, like, I mean, I know, I think he has like a, a Patreon, I think, but like, he's not yeah. even getting paid. Like, he's yeah, it was it. it was just a passion project, which is <laughs> yeah. nuts. It's like somebody that a was testament to his talent. Exactly, and somebody that was paid for this probably would not n not be able to live up to this. Like, oh no, probably not. I talked about that a couple of days ago, where it's like. 
you know, you might have a passion for doing this kind of thing, but at the end of the day, if you go in and work on it from nine to five, it's a, it's a job, you yeah. know, it, w whether it's a passion or not, it's a job. Whereas somebody who's doing it purely because this is all I want to do, like yep. the, the product is going to be better. So, Absolutely. I mean, Jagex should be happy. You know, they, they have, they have this huge, beautiful update that made the community really happy and they... Well, I guess presumably paid nothing for it. You know what we <laughs> yeah. happens behind the scenes, but like they didn't have to pay their employees to develop it. It's just here, you know. Yeah. I, I don't know um, what percentage of the player base uses Runelight. I think it's well over half. Oh so, yeah, it has to be. Well, yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. Uh, I I think so. Yeah. I'm just I'm just thinking of like mobile users who just like have no idea that this game's even on like PC. Yeah. Just, but yeah, no, it's huh? it's got to be over half of like actual players. I, I would think so too. Um, but yeah, it looks it looks so good. I spent uh, I spent a couple hours yesterday just running around the game, just like testing all the different places. And I think my favorite part of it is just the lighting. Like when you find oh yeah, um, you know, like like even little stuff like torches inside of a building. Yep. The way that they glow, it, it makes you. You know, before they were just there because it makes sense. Yeah. Like, it, like thematically, there should be a torch on this wall. But now it's like, oh, this is providing light. This yep. is lighting up this dim castle. Like, it, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's like a real game. It's, yeah. you know, it's nuts. And the craziest part is, okay, first of all, the shadows are unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I'm like, like, they're actually shadowed. Like, for some reason, I had in my head just, like, everybody would have, like, a circle shadow below them, you know? Like... Yeah, but they're super. <laughs> but they're accurate. like the actual objects shadow, and it's like dynamic. So I'm looking at this rock. So I'm fishing Karambons. There's a rock with like mossy leaves, and the water's making the shadow like it's like wiggling in the water. It's so weird. It's like yeah, it's, real? <laughs> it's it's super weird. I what got me the most as far as shadows go was well, um, really like heavily treed areas look cool. So um. Like the Shazian area, oh, you know, yeah. that they redid it with all those, like, big trees. That looks sweet. Um, but I did some T.O.B. last night, and I put the camera, like, kind of behind me at Maiden, and I swung. I have a holy scythe, and, yeah. and when I swung it, j the shadow on the ground behind me was just a perfect silhouette of, like, the holy scythe. And I was just oh, like, oh, my God, what? I'm like, how does he do this? Like, that's it's mind blowing how good it actually is. So I did um, a Chambers of Zarek challenge mode uh, in HD yesterday. And, like, okay, first of all, everything was beautiful. Like, Tecton was beautiful. Crabs was amazing. Ice Demon looked so crazy. But Shamans yeah. really got me. Shamans, they it squirts the little green juice thing at you. Yeah, and yeah. sometimes it goes out of the screen. So, you like, you know it shot at you, but you can't see it until it's about to land on you. But yeah, yep. it had a shadow of it the entire way. It oh, was that's so sick. weird. It was like, oh, this is like actually game changing. Like you can actually see stuff a lot better. <laughs> I was it, like, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. yeah. It, it, it's crazy. And yeah, Skidler projectiles was projectiles have shadows. Yeah. Um. And I I just saw this because of Skidler, but like uh, he was doing Ulm this morning and like he's shooting his trident now, and you see the blue like glow of the trident. Like yes. casting, like this... it goes like past Ulm's head, and you can kind of see it reflecting on him. I'm like, oh my god, like that's yeah. Crazy. It's as RuneScape players, you know, we've gotten accustomed to these, <laughs> yeah. you know, old school graphics. So we see this, and it's just, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's yeah. insane, the, and uh... it's not taking away anything, which is unbelievable. Because I always see HD as like, oh, this is like a novelty. It's just like, okay, like this is cool to flick on for a little bit, and then. Yeah, cool know. to look at, but th I mean, this is usable. Yeah. Like, I, c I could see myself continuing to use this indefinitely, you yeah. know? I will need to Cause... upgrade my processor, I think, <laughs> if I want to use it completely indefinitely, just because of the any little sort of frame drop just bothers me. So... Yeah, yeah. No, I know I know what you mean. When, when things drop below 50, it's like, oh, no, I hate yeah. that. That looks awful. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I'm sure you know. Compared to regular room light, it probably is way more intensive on your PC. Like, I mean, surely it has to be. Yeah, I was looking at, uh, like, I did my, uh, whatever it's called, like the task manager thing. I was looking at the processes running, and I think it's like yeah. five times as high. 
on my GPU just yep. using this. So I'm like, eh, I don't know how it's going to be because I haven't streamed with it yet. So I'm like, hopefully, because my computer is not great, but it does the yeah. job with just normal <laughs> RuneScape. Yeah. So we'll have to yeah. see. So, and that, you know, that maybe is one drawback. Well, well, that's, I guess the nice thing is, is that it is optional at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, for people that might not have a great computer, unfortunately, maybe it might not be an option, which sucks. You know, that'll be, I'm sure they'll be sad they can't use it. But I, I guess that was one of my big things coming into all this was I, I really like the idea of an HD update so long as it's toggleable. Yes. I, I don't I don't think for old school RuneScape it's something that should be permanent. But if it's toggleable, if it's something you want to use, you like it, then you should use it. And that's cool. But if Jagex were ever to, you know, because I think the whole I'm assuming we would have got into this anyway, but the whole drama that occurred with this, my assumption was that they were like, okay, at some point we are going to make our own HD plugin. So we don't want you to put this out and then, you know, that would take away from ours. So you would you would have to assume they came to some form of agreement that was like, okay, when our HD plugin is done someday, we're going to make you remove yours, which is, again, uh, this is my assumption, yeah. which, again, as long as it's not like a full like, okay, this is the new graphics of the game, you know, as long as it's yeah. a toggle, I think it's okay but yeah and like i can kind of see where jagex is coming from for trying to make everything like theirs like i think that's like, I, oh yeah i that, get it like yeah. that, like that's probably a smart thing maybe like they're like, like as a company they're saying like hey we gotta do this but i'm just seeing it at, at like a player level again i'm pretty ignorant toward like legitimate business decisions and stuff but i'm just thinking i'm like you guys got to be just so grateful for this like you're not paying a dime, right. and you're getting the most beautiful updates. Like, this game is amazing with RuneLight. RuneLight has, like, caused so much player retention and stuff. And Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. oh, my God. Like, you, you guys trying to stop that is so counterproductive and just, like, it almost is, like, evil. It's like, why would you do this to your own it game? Is. Like, stop trying to control everything. Just, like, there obviously there's lines that can be crossed, and I totally... So, like, the one thing with clients is I know there's people in the player base that are, like, really into, you know, speed running or something like that. And they don't want right. things to be tainted by, like, really OP clients. But, like, for the vast majority of players, RuneLight is not taking away anything. And we live in 2021 now. Almost, we're going on 2022. We're not living, like, as children anymore. Like, the game's going to evolve. We're going to get plugins that are arguably extremely OP, like Quest Helper and stuff. Yep. But it's like, yep. it's just the game now. Like, we just have to accept it. There's no stopping it. Or else you're just going to, like, I don't know. You're going to basically stack kill base. the game, kind of, in a way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it is. It's a very different game now than it used to be. Um, I talk about that a lot, but it's, you know, the graphics look similar. The, you know, the combat system maybe is still similar. The, the biggest difference now between back in the day for real is the average is like the average mentality of the player. Uh, you know, back in the day, people hopped on RuneScape after they got home from elementary school and they wanted to dick around <laughs> with their Rune Skimitar in the Edgeville wilderness. Okay, that yes. was fun. That's what that's that's what yeah. they wanted to do. Yep. Now, Full myth, the bro. average RuneScape player wants to progress. They're they're an adult, yeah. okay? You know, they, they they go to work, they come home, they have a couple hours to play. They want to see tangible progress. And so, you know, the average, the mentality of the player, right, is different. And so things like Quest Helper, which is, you know, huge, huge boost to efficiency. Because, like, I did um, Underground Pass on dead man mode like not too long ago mm -hmm. and like people think of underground pass as this disgustingly long quest that's terrible <laughs> i put quest i swear to god i did it in 20 minutes i mean it was just <laughs> i mean it was nothing it, you know so it's, it's like updates like that have serious value now because yeah. people they're not here they, they don't really play this game for not to say it's not fun but it's fun in a different way yeah. it's fun because they want to progress yeah you know? yeah and honestly so this is a discussion I've had with many guests on the Sebe cast is like, what, where do you draw the line 
with like op plugins and yeah. people have said quest helper is extremely op people have even come to me because i'm a clue enthusiast i love clues and yeah you know people are like oh what do you think about clue helpers and puzzle solvers and stuff like this like do you think that's killing what clue scrolls were meant to be you know initially and sure it honestly gets to the point where it's like it isn't taking away anything in fact like if we didn't have these puzzle solvers and other things i would just have to pull up a third party thing like yeah like, that's the thing yeah. like like do you honestly think if runelight didn't have the solver you would be pulling out the <laughs> sextant and the chart yourself no you just look it up on youtube yeah. i mean it it's yeah. the same thing it just gets to the point faster really yeah i know and that's just something that's just we there is no perfect solution for this and i think this is honestly the best we got it's i don't know and it's rune light and oh my god like so you played on os buddy i'm assuming for i did years. for a very long time yep yep i did too even switching to rune light i was like nah os buddy's like the same goat, you know like that's it, the it took me a while yeah <laughs> People were like, oh, you got to switch, you got to switch. I'm like, why? It's the same thing, you know? And I, part of the reason I switched so slow was, okay, OS Buddy's still a thing, right? Technically, it still I, exists. I think. <laughs> I, I honestly I, don't know. I, I, don't I think so, too. Yeah. There's got to be some dedicated people, but um, yeah. the the owner of OS Buddy used to come on my stream sometimes and talk to me, and he was, you know, he was a really cool guy, and he gave me, like, seven years of free os buddy so i was like okay you know pro is free you know the guy's cool i'll just keep using it so like when i switched it was like oh i feel like i'm i'm doing a disservice to my yeah. dude yeah which at the end of the day it's i'm i'm sure he gets it but yeah it, like i said if os buddy does still <laughs> exist i'm sure it's fine yeah i'm sure i'm sure it 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 has like the stuff you need at a minimum but it's just like Roomlight has, especially with this HD thing. Oh my gosh! Oh, now, yeah. now I don't even know. There's no way. Yeah. No. I see. I remember when, like, OS Buddy had their version of like GPU or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It was just like it was cool, but it was just like it was almost like unplayable, in a way. Yeah. It 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 made it look like uh, like the characters were made of clay. It was yeah. Uh, and there's a was, little bit odd. of that in some areas when it's super. Bright. There is. Yeah. But, like, this is just looks fantastic. And I was honestly, so I played in 2004 to 2007. And so I never had that nostalgia of, like, the 2008 graphics and yeah. onward. So I was assuming this update was going to make our characters move weird and sway when they're, like, standing still. And, like, their staves yeah. are, like, moving all around and stuff. But, like, nah, they kept really true to what, like, old school looks like. And they just enhanced mm -hmm. it big time. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, so you said you played from 2004 to 07 and then you stopped until old school? Yeah, so I stopped until 2015 old school after GE, after Zora and everything. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So I never got that like true experience of like yeah. the beginning of old school, the reset, you know? Yeah, yeah, I feel that. I remember I... um <laughs> when, you, when you brought up earlier the whole like watching your old videos thing... Yeah. I remember I made a video uh, the day that Old School came out. It was like a three minute long video, literally just of me on the login page <laughs> talking about how excited I was. Like the game was out. I didn't even log in. Like, I, I don't know what my thought process is, was for this video, but it was just me like on the login page going like, yo guys, Old School RuneScape's out. Go play it. I'm so excited. <laughs> and like that was the video. I was like, why no but why like, did i think this was and, good and the, the funniest part is like it probably actually was a good idea because if you're really into something like okay so one thing i was really into when i was a kid was like apple products when uh, i just yeah. like the new like ipod touches like sure whenever they would like announce those and so even people that were just regurgitating the same information and stuff i would just devour it because i just loved watching little videos on people getting hyped about it Yep, it's just a, any info about it you yeah, could. Yeah, yeah. and it, it didn't even have to be info. Just, like, some guy just mentions it, and I'm like, oh. Let's I go! Yeah. yeah. It was basically just, like, like those videos were, like, the sections where you just comment stuff, and, like, you're all excited about it. It's not really about the video's content, but yeah. it is funny. Yeah, though. I feel that. Yeah, um, I, uh, I, I do recall when Old School first came out, and I was ecstatic. I mean, I was, gosh... This is like early 2013, so I was like 
14 years old i think or any like something like that that's so, so crazy yeah <laughs> you're, I, you're so I young I, I thought you were my age for the longest time i'll like i swear I how old you, are you i'm 26 okay i'm i'm 24 so i'm not i'm not that much younger just just a tish but yeah wait wait wait, wait. that you were how did old? i do my math wrong oh wait yeah yeah wait Hold on. did you say you were 14 i uh, know i would have been 15 i think yeah so you were I, born I in 19 seven so okay so you were like just oh so you were turning 16 that year yeah I'm later so, that year dude yeah. it feels so weird like years are okay <laughs> i can't yeah, believe I know. how it's, long ago 2013 is like i know it's it's so it's like you like you said at the start you know we're all, it's almost 2022 already like yeah it, it's disgusting time just goes <laughs> faster and faster yeah yeah i, um, I want to hear i want to hear more about the release okay yeah so i remember um when it first came out being super duper excited right because you know at the time i i played runescape 3 um pretty i i even continued to play it after old school came out and you know maybe this is something we can talk about later too but i want to go on the record and say i think runescape 3 is a, a really fun game and people didn't give it a fair shot sometimes when they maybe should have because i think the pvm is fun but i continued to play it for a while and then when old school came out i got super excited for that and i remember just it, it was the uh, the biggest wave of nostalgia right because you can never perfectly recreate it unfortunately it'll never feel quite the same yeah. as it did the first time but you know after playing after you know because i started i started playing runescape in 2006 and i've this is this is kind of gross i've never quit ever like i have never not played runescape <laughs> since 2006 and on <laughs> wait, wait have you not even taken like a month I, off i would say the longest break i have taken is like a week or two because i was not home that's insane. Like I, so like a camping trip or something? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you would really think I would be a lot better at this game by now you, after all these years. You are really but, good at the game, though. Like, compared to... Like, I think you're at the level you should be. Well, that's that's fair. I, I appreciate that. Um, So I, I, you know, after playing, you know, RuneScape 3 for a good bit and just seeing everything change over the years, uh, it was really, really cool to go back to the go you know you log in and you hear the lumbridge music and you would kill some goblins it just it was awesome yeah and then i felt like i remember one of my earliest progress videos there was a guy who excuse me, he died in our dune now of course this was when you know you had the old school death mechanics oh, yeah. so this dude <laughs> apparently he completed imp catcher and he died in our dune and he lost his amulet of accuracy and I picked it up, and you would have thought I just PK'd like an Elijah. Like, I just, <laughs> oh, I would, I, the peak excitement to pick up this amulet of accuracy. And that, I would say, was probably my, my favorite thing about the original release, was just, I, you, I was just giddy. Yeah. Just, just beside myself, just, the whole thing just made you so overjoyed, you know? Yep. So, did you play Iron Man on release? I actually didn't. I was a little bit slow. I feel like I, I just am in general. I'm really, really slow about catching on to trends. Yeah. Um, I, I did do the HD thing, of course, yesterday right away. But typically, when something new comes out, I have a very, very hard time. Unless it's like PVM content, because obviously that's what I enjoy. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I have a hard time. It's hard so moving like, let's on, say, yeah. It is. It is. I'm. I'm a bit clingy to my old accounts and stuff. I, yeah. I think maybe I get a little too attached to them. Um. So I started Iron Mammal, which is you know like my good yeah. account, my yeah. one, my best account. That was in um the summer of 2015, which I don't really remember when Old School actually came out, or was sorry what uh when Iron Man. So Iron, Iron Man, Man I think came out, out October 2014. Okay, so yeah, so I was, you know, Just a I, year, I was, a year yeah, late, about a almost. year late to the party. So not horribly, but all I can say is I'm, I'm really glad my chat convinced me to do it because obviously now I love it. But yeah. for a while there, I was like, 
Eh, I don't I know because you I put so like much it. time, and like the account means so much to you. It's like, and right, right. Yeah, it's hard to just jump ship and do something new. But I guess I've kind of, you know, like when I when I played my hardcore for a while there. See, that was really fun too. So over the years, I've kind of taught myself like try new stuff. It, it, you know, it, it usually ends up being fun when, yeah. whenever I do it. Absolutely. Yeah, I feel similarly. Or like I don't try some some of the times things will give me anxiety like a new update. For, oh yeah, like oh, Theater same. of Blood, I avoided for at least six months. I was like, nope, nope, that's like too hard. I don't want to be wasting money through like dying all the time, and it was just it really intimidating. Yeah, no, I I feel that I did do I did do Tob on release. Um, I think one of the big reasons I was super excited for that one was because that was something I actually went to Jagex and tested beforehand, oh. which like, I think, so like there was, there was a pretty big group of us and it was, it was pretty clear on their decisions on who they invited for skill versus just like, okay, you're a content creator, so we need some coverage. <laughs> so like, like I was one of the, just the people that they were like, okay, yeah, this guy, you know, this guy PVMs a bit, but he's a content creator, so we'll invite him. And that was really cool to get to see um, the pre-release TOB. I made a video. They let us record. Um, and I made a video showcasing all the differences. And it, it was ridiculous. Uh, when we tested it, there there was no Zarbus. That, had, that hadn't even been added yet. Oh, wow. Um, the This one was crazy. So the Nylakis room underwent the most changes by far. When we first tested it, all of the small Nilos had, I think, like, 22 hit points each. Uh, so it was... And, and there was no boss at the end. It was just... Oh, geez. All the Nilos were super beefy. And then, as soon as they were all dead, there was just nothing for about five seconds. And then you were done. <laughs> so I remember it was Bodhi's idea to add the boss. Yeah. And he, like, wrote down his idea on a piece of paper. And they like added it to a T the way he described it. Like that is that wow. is like his boss. Like like they pretty much added it to a T. That's crazy. That's sick. Yeah, it it was it was that was one of the cool things about it was um you know after we we'd play T O B for like a couple of hours, and then we would all pretty much just get in a big circle and talk about our ideas, talk about what we liked, what we didn't like. Uh, those circles were usually. Just us, like, people would say a few things, then we'd all go, uh, Wooks, what do you think? <laughs> what, do, what do you, we're like, we're like, we're like, like all this, the peasants talking, Godfather, and then you, like, right? ask the king, like, what? what yeah, <laughs> like, anyway, now let's get to the important opinion, <laughs> Wooks, what do you think? Um, but yeah, it was, it, it was cool to, to see it kind of go through changes. Um, the, the funniest thing was definitely Sodic Seg. Yeah. So you could about imagine this is the first time anybody has played Tob ever. So we we get teleported at Sodic Seg for the maze portion. We're all looking at this, going, "Okay, um, what do what do we do now? <laughs> what do you think the move is?" And the J mods are standing behind <laughs> our computers. They're watching us. All of them have this big smile on their face. They're just waiting. <laughs> They're just they they are they are all standing there grinning. They're waiting, and we're like, uh, let's run back to the boss. All of us in the team cross on different tiles at once and just boom, insta wipe, and they just lost it. They laughed so hard. Oh my god! It was hilarious, and we're like, okay, you want to tell us what to do, please, because we don't get it. <laughs> oh, it was so incredible. Funny. How was Verzik? So, Verzik, uh, when we tested it, was different as well. There actually was no Phase 3, which Interesting. I think... Well, I don't I don't think that that was like, this is how we're going to release it. It was more like, we don't want to show you everything. Mm, I we, see. we want, you know, yeah. the release to be a surprise a little bit. Um, so, Verzik was hard because we had to figure out the pillar phase, you know, with the yeah. Dawnbringer. Yeah. Eventually, we did figure it out kind of but we only got through because verzik was bugged so we <laughs> she wouldn't attack for some reason so we just stood out in the open and just tried it into her we just mm. we just stood there and attacked her she didn't <laughs> attack us um 
So they, they got to fix that, obviously. So, I remember to um sorry, I don't know. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Um my team was like it was like me, MMORPG, Zulu, Cloud Badass, and then maybe one other person. At any rate. Uh, again, I, I would say I'm not the greatest PVMer. They decided that I was the honorary tank, so I have a video <laughs> clip of me. We're, we're, we're at Maiden. We're about to start. And everybody stood outside, and I run in the boss room with a Din's Bulwark and full Torags. I'm like, I got this, guys. Let's go figure this out. I was like the honorary tank. <laughs> and we, we did, we figured oh, out Maiden, God. like, right away. Like, the crabs spawned, and they moved in. And I don't know who it was, but they're like, oh, I bet we have to barrage these. Like, it, it was instantaneous recognition of what to do. So that was really, that was really cool I, to see. I don't understand how people solve things like that so quickly. Neither do I. It, like, it, it's mind-blowing. Dude, Nightmare release? I just remember going in there, and we were all dealing, like, blue hit splats. I'm like, dude, I think we're healing. Like, I, like, I think we're charging up. <laughs> Like, the yeah, nightmare. Are, are like we, we, gotta, we gotta stop, thing? guys. And they're like, no, no, no. Like, this is what you do. And then attack pillars. I'm like, dude, we've been in here for like two seconds. How do you already know, like, what we're doing? I always feel like there's like a trick that's being, like, played on us. Like, you know, like on release. It's like, oh, no, no, we shouldn't be doing this. I'm really skeptical about, like, things like that. So, right. Always be suspicious that, yeah. like, it's not as obvious as it seems. Yeah. Yeah. But no, people just figure out things instantaneously, I swear. Yeah, they do. And, like, they, they figure out these metas, too. Like, that, um, in, in in regards to figuring things out, I don't know. Um, have you have you done like the five zero method at Zami? With, yeah, like, T-Bell uh, and stuff. Yeah, T-Bell, Yep. How how do how do you figure that out? How do you figure out what tiles, dude? Specific, it's like what? Okay, first no of sense. all, first of all, GE Challenge is the guy that like really worked on that, and he is just a five head to the extreme. Like, oh, he's gotta be. He is extremely smart and he know like the thing is is like not only with the game but he's just a smart person in general and yeah. he knows a lot about computers and stuff and how like coding would work and other things but i'm sure that helps the crazy thing is like he will map out like a room like a grid so like sarah like all the god wars dungeon bosses he knows like how to like kite them and stuff besides armadillo yeah and, like like the perfect he, he'll route out like he'll just look at the grid and be like okay like the monsters will move this way if I move this way and stuff. And he'll just do it. And it reminds me of um, exact scouting the Inferno on, like, his super low-level accounts. Like, there's, yeah. like, this application that literally tells you exactly, like, which tiles to go on to, like, avoid certain things and, like, what to pray. It's insane. And somebody came up with that. I'm like, who? Like, you got to be just so so smart to do this so like. so smart just to have the level of like comprehension of like <laughs> how this like it's just it it, it blows my mind dude yeah, it's crazy i remember at zook when like exact was trying to test that thing where he's trying to stack like four majors at zook yeah yep, yep and the dude is moving like really far away from the shield on the corners mm -hmm. i'm mm -hmm. like how much testing did this take to realize what the safe spots were like like, yeah, and who, then that's the one sacrificing thing. runs to do this. Like, to, oh my god! I, yeah, it's it's not like you can just hop in and test that. Like, you have to <laughs> yeah. go through the entire I, thing I and know. then like die and be like, okay, well, we'll write that down. Like, yeah. what? You can have some oh, mental fortitude to do that. Like, jeez. Bodhi put a comment on uh, exact like forty combat inferno. Yeah, back when he did that, and he was just saying like, this is like one of the greatest gamer feats of all time, and it'll like never be recognized as such because it's just like so niche you know yeah but yeah it's true, still though. to this it's day crazy. that 40 combat inferno blows my mind yeah there are, there are people that are just insanely good at this game it's unreal the the other True. crazy thing about that is like just it's not like you just make an account and go to the inferno it's like you have to get a super low level fire cape first just to unlock right, which inferno. is hard too <laughs> And then he goes into the Inferno and just like, all right, don't fuck up or else you got to redo everything. Yeah, this entire account. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the stakes are very, very high. Which, on top of it being challenging, you have to add that. Yeah, unbelievable. You know, speaking of, uh, I know you brought up, I know this is your 
I don't mean to ask you questions because I know this is your. This is a save it, cast, man. It goes, it goes wherever, whenever, or I guess the whenever um, part's irrelevant, but yeah. Well, I know you've obviously killed lots of uh, Nightmare. I was curious in your opinion of Fosani's because I love it. Fosani's is night and day versus normal solo Nightmare. Oh, like, yeah. So, so different. I, I don't know how much normal solo Nightmare you did. If you even did not it a at ton, all. but like enough to know that it sucked. Oh, like it wasn't it, fun. It was horrible. It was just okay. I also, um, I don't know if you've done any of the combat achievements, but like, I, I, yeah, I've done almost master. I have a few left for master, but okay. So you've done like you had to go back to a solo nightmare and do the like sub 16 yeah. or something, or maybe that was grand yep. master. I can't remember, but no, no, I had well, I don't know about sub 16, but yeah, I had to, yeah, do there was one like sub 19, ones. and then there's a sub 16, I think. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, just doing that one kill was yep. treacherous. I'm just like, dude, this is horrible. Like, how did I do this? I, I seriously did like 2,900 solos. Oh, my God. A over, regular nightmare? Yes, over nine <laughs> months. It was like literally over nine months. Just oh. that's all I did, basically. And it was like a living hell. But um, and <laughs> of course, I get like I was going for an Inquisitor's Mace the entire time. That's the only thing I wanted. Yeah. And yep. day one Fasani's, I get the mace. Yep. That's just like, that is like, that is the definition of RNG for you. Like whatever. Yep. <laughs> like, and I was loving Fasani's. I did it for 18 hours straight and I was having the time of my life. I was like, this is the most amazing update of all time. Like this is beautiful. Like Modern Arcane is a genius. Yeah. Like, I didn't even know I wanted this. Yeah. No, I know. That's the thing. Cause like, they did, they did the, Fosani's nightmare like a while back where it would do you remember it was like a, a challenge yeah it was, like, like a, really a time cool. thing yeah yeah so they did that so when they announced it again I was like oh okay cool you know they're doing like another little thing but then I looked into it and I tried it out and like I was really bad at it at first my uh my first ever Fosani's attempt I killed it on my first try ever I was like okay one and oh baby and then I went on like a 15 death streak. I was I was so <laughs> tilted. I was like, okay, what happened? I, I had it. Now I lost it. But then once I got used to it again, oh, you're right. It, it is complete an entire night and day. Yeah. And once you get used to it, like when, yeah, when I had to go back for the combat diaries, it was like, this is, this is awful. How, how did, see, and I, I didn't do that many regular nightmare solos. So like. I feel for like you and Lake and yeah, like, Lake. I oh. we can relate very closely, but I'm just like I know exactly what Lake went through. It is not, it is not optimal to go through that. No, and I, you know, you know what I remember about because I I knew you were grinding out the Inquisitor's Mace when when that when that uh, Obsidian Mace thing happened. Oh, yeah. Did you did you think it was gonna get nerfed, or were you like, okay. "Oh no"? You know what's insane about that? So sometimes I'm really quick to like judge things and just like, okay, like this is my thoughts. This is the same thing with HD. I need to like take a step back before I start, you know, presenting my whole view on HD and stuff. Or, or yeah. like, there's already people asking me like, "Are you gonna permanently play on this?" Like, I don't want to make any final decisions because I gotta test right. things. But um. Yeah. N with, with the obsidian mace and like full obsidian it was better it was like uh i think it was better dps than a mace but it was like better dps than a mace without full inquisitors like i think full inquisitors with the mace was actually just like Made slightly better. better but the fact that you could just get obsidian basically for like a gp cost for, like really quick yeah for nothing yeah um the crazy thing is is the whole reason I ever wanted a mace was to go to Seracnus for it. Mm -hmm. Wearing that full gear, you just got dicked on by the mage spiders. Oh, yeah. Like, it was, I can't even imagine. It was horrible. And it, before they even, like, re-nerfed um, it back to, like, what it was, like, I was already decided, like, no, I got to go get a mace because I cannot do this. In full obsidian. Yeah, like, I yeah. can't do this in full obsidian because this is just, like, actually painful. Um yeah. And, like, the only way that around that, because I remember when Seracnus came out, I was kind of doing some sweaty kills for you, Prey Mage, and then you flick to range your melee on the boss as yeah, needed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just, it sucks. Like, it, yeah. it's an easy enough boss that you don't, I, like, why exactly. put all that extra and work? I was you know? doing, like, an Armatop switch. Yeah. Like, and I was right. like, this is, 
this is not the Sir Agnes I know and love, and this is going to be horrible if I have to do this for, like, thousands of hours. But Yeah, because you have, what, like, 20,000-something kills, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot yeah. more to get. Like, I mean, that's <laughs> that's a lot to be trying hard, you know? I, mean, I know. <laughs> I know. Um, the crazy thing is, is after they reverted that whole change, I was like, honestly, that was really well-balanced. And people will disagree with me or whatever, but that was actually a really – it was actually a really good change to that because it actually made it useful at some places. But it wasn't best, and you right. lost a lot of um, – Defense. Yeah, you lost a lot of defense. You also uh, had to have the entire thing equipped. So there was a lot of right. things like like you could never use it for Slayer because you had to have like the, the full like helmet and everything to get like all those buffs. I mean, yeah, you could use it for Slayer, but like – it wouldn't be optimal. Yeah. Like, the fact that you had to wear this entire set was actually kind of cool. And I saw the DPS calcs. Like, somebody posted it. I, I can't remember I'm off the top of my head. But it yeah. was actually a really healthy change, believe it or not, that just kind of was overlooked. Because people were like, oh, this is going to be, like, the new meta for Nightmare or whatever. But it's like, it actually wasn't. It was, I don't yeah, know, there it was, was interesting. I know what you mean. There was kind of, like, a... A knee jerk like whoa this is better than the inquisitor's mace everyone that, freaked that, out you know yeah yeah that can't be allowed and then they freaked out yeah yeah it honestly We're, it was a it was a pretty balanced update believe it or not so it was, interesting yeah i know i i i didn't even get to try it because i think it it got fixed pretty quickly i think it, yeah like, it did like, within the day like within a few hours i think yeah, it was one of those things where I think I had gone to bed super late the, la the night before, and then I woke up at, like, 11 o'clock, and I was like... I looked at Twitter, and I'm like, juicy! What did I miss? Holy cow! I, I remember freaking out about it. I, I slept... Uh, I don't know if you were awake during the Tebow Bush thing. I was not. Yeah, I was, that was, I was also asleep. funny to read about. <laughs> you just wake up, and you're like, oh, drama. You what? Like... I was like, what the hell happened? <laughs> I, know. I just remember there was this, this poor soul... That, like, they did the rollback, and he, like, got, like, a Armadale crossbow or something during that time, and he had to, like... And he lost it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm so Roll glad I was are always it. really sad, because you know, like, that's going to happen to at least somebody. Yeah. Like, they're going to they're gonna miss something big. Yep. You oh, know, speaking gosh. of rollbacks, I know, I, I don't know, I guess, suppose you probably wouldn't have been playing. I forget when this happened exactly, um, but at some point, I remember hearing about this pre-EOC, you know, so this was probably like maybe 08, 09, something like that. They reworked the way that the Ring of Wealth worked. So I don't I don't even know how the Ring of Wealth works right now in RuneScape 3, but they they reworked it so that it, you know, didn't work the way that it, it does in old school. Yeah. And it broke Corp. <laughs> what happened was, is if you were wearing a Ring of Wealth, you would, I shit you not, get a sigil every single kill no matter what <laughs> every single kill how long did and, i go for uh like two or three hours and they <laughs> didn't roll it back they actually did not roll it back which was oh astonishing apparently it must not have messed up the economy Dude, too bad well it's hard to say because just, like who like knows how, now how did those but, things even get in the game like are there just j mods like trolling like like oh this would be cool but like i'll revert it before it goes live into the game and you just forget about it like i mean maybe it's it's either that or you know i mean i'm not a programmer or whatever but it's just you would have to assume it's just something really specific in the code goes wrong yeah and it makes the... see but that's like so i know what you mean it almost sounds like it has to be intentional because how could you accidentally make something always drop but yeah then again i'm not a programmer yeah, so exactly no i'm idea, just ignorant to the whole thing just assume yeah same that's funny <laughs> yeah do you remember um i think it was last summer they were trying to come out with like the boss slayer or wait what was it called yeah i know what you're Master? talking about yeah yep and then it just like basically got scrapped because everyone was Isled. like against it yeah um they were trying to come out with like a new ring of wealth update kind of like a like a brand new ring of wealth that yeah would give you better loot and i just remember thinking like dude people are going to ma be making absolute bank just barraging random stuff in the catacombs all day every day just yep. wear this ring <laughs> just get as many kills as 
as you can per hour and just make it bank. Yeah, it I, is a cool I remember idea. that. Like, it, it was a cool idea if they would have got it right, because I think it came out for a while. And, like, somebody... Was it like a thousand Sarah Brews? Or like, oh, like there was some... 2,500 noted four dose Sarah Brews for Conar yeah. release. Like, whoa. <laughs> you know, there, Dude, there's like, no shot. Somebody put that in and was like, yeah, this is fine. They're like, there's no they're way. Like, they're like, this is fine because it's rare. <laughs> it's like, dude, Ex do you understand you, how broken People this are is? going to get it. Like, <laughs> dude, I, <sighs> it reminds me of like, just like, the hundred, the hundred noted like dragon plate legs, just things that are like you really just want to fuck the economy up. Like, you yeah, know, <laughs> like, dude. Like the thought process had to have been, oh, this is really rare. You know, one person will get it maybe like a month. But the thing is, when when, when things come out on release, everybody does it. Yep. So of course things are going to come into the game because there's so many people doing it. And then you're going to get this huge backlash. So and the, it, the brews were, it's just like, dude, these are like finished products. Like, and I'm thinking, okay, so I'm correct me if I'm wrong audience. But I'm pretty sure it was 2,500. I'm just thinking, dude, even 25 noted brews is like, damn, that's a respectable that's, drop. Like, holy, yeah. like. That's 25 still already finished. And then you think 250 is like, Jesus, like that's Holy 10 shit. times more than that. And then 10 times more on top of that. Like, bruh, you just do like one lucky Konar Slayer. You don't need to run birdhouses for a fucking month. Like, yeah, like you're <laughs> set for a very long time now. Like, what is this, dude? You're truly yeah. just trying to break the game. Yeah, yeah. definitely uh, a questionable decision. But it's, I mean, it's not a bad idea, like to, you know, maybe buff the rare drop table a little bit. But... And it's cool to have really rare expensive drops like i think that is cool like uh something i'm not a huge fan of but i understand a lot of people like consistency is like conar keys when you go and unlock them every single yeah. thing is like the same it's like 100k yeah, it's roughly the same value yeah and it would be a lot more exciting if it was just like kind of crap and then you just get this big thing you know this big one off yeah i get it too people like the consistency because you don't want to go open them and be like wow i just got 5k yeah. but i know i agree i think that probably is some of the best feelings in this game is like I love I love doing God Wars bosses, especially on Iron Man, because I mean the the loot isn't like god awful, but it's not great. Yeah. Until you get like the rare drop. And that to me, I guess, is what I enjoy. Absolutely. About PVMing in this game is is that that ecstatic feeling of the big one off drop. You know? Yeah. It it's super cool. Yeah, they I um I think Fasani is like obviously like Fasani's is twenty percent better. It's like even more than twenty yeah. percent faster, honestly, because of like the teleport yeah. and the fact that they were comparing like most people, like most normal accounts, if they did a solo nightmare, which is the most efficient for drops, it would probably take them twenty three minutes. I was rocking like oh, a yeah. scythe and full inquisitors and harm and I was still getting, you know, fifteen to seventeen minute kills. And then yep. when I'm getting now seven to eight minute kills like that's like huge uh, yeah that's insane yeah the, the time difference yeah. yeah so um but like initial because like i know i know people were like it was always people that hadn't done nightmare they would be they'd be saying nightmare is perfect you know don't touch it like it drops shit and then you get like these rare rewards i'm like dude i don't think you understand how rare this stuff is like it is you, right like yeah like there i don't think there's anything inherently wrong with a, a gob wars-esque drop table i think the problem with regular nightmare was that the regular drops were terrible and after tw after you spend 20 minutes and it's not it's it's not like uh you know like like soloing corp the way i do the slow way it's like a 12 minute kill something like that but it's super easy it, it's it's literally you know, specking, tellying, and then you sit there and wait for it to die. Like, Nightmare actually requires effort and input. And you do that for 20 minutes, and then there's bass on the floor, and you're yep. like, fuck this. Like, and, and it would be totally acceptable if the mace was, like, I don't know, 150-hour grind. And then you're getting, yeah. like, really shitty loot. But no, it was a 400-hour grind with, like, yeah, really massive with one. decent gear. And, like, if you wanted, I remember people were like, oh, I want to go for a harm. It's like, do you understand, like, you, if you go rate, if you just get lucky and just go the rate, that's 600 hours of, like, efficient nightmare, not including the time running to the boss. 
like which is six hundred hours like that's like ellie status like yeah except basically. it's effort <laughs> right right and the know. thing about harm is too i i don't have one on iron mammal yeah the thing I've heard about harm is obviously the the thing you want to use with it is fire surge. I have heard that upkeeping burnt pages is <laughs> just horrible. Yeah. Uh, it's not even feasible. So yeah. like, as an Iron Man, it'd be cool to have as a collector's item, but like realistically, yeah. eh. it. I will say having a harm and just grinding out some Winter Todd and some Wrath runes using a harm at Fasani's is super fun. You get that long yeah. range, oh, I'm sure that extra just, tile, and you're just chilling. Just wrecks the pillars. I bet. So speaking of that, so uh, I know the harm is going to be getting devalued because of the new two tick wand that's coming out. That thing looks interesting. Yeah, I want to. I want to talk to you about raids three and the rewards specifically. Sure. So did you read up on the blog? Um, like when it, I've already forgotten what the names of things are, but I know there's like a range oh, yeah. set, like the armor, and then there's like that amulet that's a range and melee amulet, and then you got some other things and then of course the arcane attachment yeah, yeah. thoughts so um i like i like the arcane attachment idea um it's been a while it you 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 combine it with an arcane sigil right yeah it's not... and you can dismantle an arcane for a, a current oh, okay okay see I, like as an iron that's nice that you'll be able to dismantle an arcane instead of having to get a whole another one i think that would have got some backlash if you couldn't mm -hmm. uh dismantle it because obviously corb is a very big hour grind yeah um i'm pretty sure it's expensive though to dismantle it it's like i this i don't know why this number's in my head but i think it's like 25 mil like, which i think is fair personally I, I i don't think that that's entirely unreasonable for you yeah. to be penalized for dismantling it i don't think that's unfair um I think that'll be nice, though. Uh, I know a while back, was it the the Sirens charm they wanted to give to to Nightmare, mm -hmm. um, and that was gonna be a Mage's book attachment, and I didn't I didn't like that. I'm a really big fan of the idea of new best in slots coming from being attached to the previous best in slot, so as to not devalue the previous best in slot. Like, if there's a way, I think that you can. Without it being forced and obvious, if there's a way that you can make a new best in slot incorporate the previous, I think it's ultimately going to be for the best for the economy. Yeah. Um. So I like the arcane upgrade. Um, I do too. Yeah. And then as far as the wand goes, I watched uh, somebody, this wasn't even that long ago, but somebody sent me a streamable um, of somebody using it for solo Ulm on the Mage Claw. It must have it been Tip. Was it Tipper Kitty? It, I don't recall, but probably. It looks really cool. Where like, so he's like moving, right? And he's doing the quick attacks, like every two tiles. And then mm -hmm. you run a bit and it looks like a fire surge big at the end. And then you cross again. Like it looked really fun. Yeah. So now, I'm wondering where it's going to be meta wise, I guess. But the thing that kind of bothers me about it is that, it, I don't know. It feels arbitrary to me to have it two tick. For three attacks and then four tick like right after and then it like resets that cycle i think it's the reason it's I think weird it's, i think it's arbitrary <laughs> because there's already weapons that are four tick like why not make it more why not just keep that wand two tick permanently and then if you're gonna do the mage running thing you would just have to have like a a sang or a trident or something on top of that so it's and like tagging at the end yeah i'm yeah. just like because you all like you already couldn't just main that wand because like at all like a solo one because you know you just the be damage attacked. is too smart right yeah right right, right. yeah like you you couldn't do the same pattern but if i don't know i don't know for me it's just weird i feel like it should just be one attack i understand they're trying to do something different it just feels so unnecessary i mean it's it I, unless I can think of something, or unless I'm missing something, that that would surely be the first weapon of that kind. It's like in I just like RuneScape history that that has a varying attack rate. I just imagine, like, imagine they came out with a blowpipe nowadays, but instead of it just being two tick nonstop, it's like it's two tick and then it's five tick later, but it shoots a big thing, so it's almost like a Tebow and a blowpipe mix, and like you just attack a certain amount of times and you get a big Tebow hit. It's just like, right, why not just have the two weapons, you know? Right, why not just flick to the Tebow, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. No, I, I get that point, and that, that, that is fair, to be honest. I guess it, it'll be interesting to see 
how good i don't know if the stats have been tweaked or i guess i, I didn't even play around with it but yeah you know what you said is really interesting because you know you could swap to a Sanguine SD for that last hit, and then you could be getting healed as well. Exactly. So if the damage is going to be similar, then you'd almost say, why don't I just do that so that I can get the healing? And assuming it'll remember what your last attack was, you wouldn't be able to do that, right? Because it would probably go two tick and then the four tick at the end. Well, surely if you do all the two ticks, but you don't use the four tick attack, the next time you equip it... It's probably going to do that four tick attack, yeah, unless I, it forgets. I think I know. think they said if you don't attack with it for like nine ticks, then it resets back to like the okay, two, two, so two, two, four. Too long. It, it, yeah. it would take too long to reset realistically, mm -hmm. so that you would be able to swap. Yeah. Yeah, which is just I don't know. It's I want to just mess around with it. I never really messed around with it in the tournament. I world. didn't either. Yeah. I don't know, but um. It's crazy because, like, you see the harm as, like, this is, like, best in slot mage. But now that is not going to be the case, especially with this wand that's best in slot DBS over a Sang. And then you have a new attachment to the arcane that's giving a boost that can't be used with uh, the harmonized orb. And then, like, you use, like, imbued heart as well because the harm doesn't yep. get that effect either. It's like, dude, this is – I wonder what they're going to do with the harm. Yeah, stacking the odds against the harm. It, I, I would be interested to see if they're going to try to rebalance the harm against all that or not. Yeah. I, I mean... I thought something that would be cool is if the harm could could cast every combat spell, maybe besides Ancients. I know there's a lot of people that would be... I know that would kind of break the game if, you know, Ancients were faster attacking, like oh, five yeah. to four tick. But if it was like every other spell besides that spell book that was combat... I think it would actually be yeah. the harm would get a lot more use. I, I think of those demon spells from yeah, the like demon look. or demon bane or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, like if you could have a harm that would like I know those spells are already irrelevant, but could get but a they little could, bit more use. Yeah, they could be made more relevant because I, I remember um, there was a combat achievement task. You had to kill Zami with the the demon bane spell. Yep, and. Like you can do, I you can do the five zero method with it. You had to manually cast it to do it quickly enough. But mm. if you could four tick it with the harm, you could be yeah. lazy and not manually cast it. And yep. then, I mean, it, you know, it's that is something that would just bring a niche to things. And I think that that is where the harm should be taken. I hate it that the harm is only good for fire surge. It's like you have to be on this right. spell book. You have to. Every time you brew, you have to reset like your auto cast. Like, oh my god, this is so cringe. Like, just <laughs> right, right, because it's a really powerful staff, and it'd be cool if it was more useful in more places. So, yeah. I feel like they probably will rebalance it a bit. Um, if they don't, you know, I will say initially, especially when when Nightmare came out, I thought it was really weird how many drops they gave it. That boss has so many drops; it's ridiculous. So, like to me, I was like. You know, I feel like they maybe could have, like, split these drops up and we could have gotten, like, another boss later on down the line or something. Because he's got, well, you got the three, in well, four Inquisitor pieces, three three orbs and the staff. Yeah. Like, that's a lot of uniques for one boss. Um, So it'd be, it, 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 it would be a shame to have the harm devalued because it's so rare. Yeah. It's extremely rare and, you know. That's actually a good point. It would have been cool if Nightmare was just Inquisitors, almost, and it was like yeah, actually I, I obtainable, you know. So like they would increase the drop rates to make it a little bit less. Yeah, a little uh, more horrible. realistic to grind out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that would have actually been really cool. Just like this is uh, something you're not gonna be grinding super super long term because I still haven't completed Nightmare. I still am missing an Eldritch. Yeah, which is which is insane for how many kills you've done. Yeah, I probably spent like twelve hundred hours there. Yeah, and and you're and you're still not done. So that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like they just they just gave it so many items, which I think was because, I mean I I forget it's been a while, but like there 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 wasn't any big bosses before Nightmare for quite a while. Yeah. I think, and so that was probably what they were like. Well, haven't put a boss out in a while, so here's a whole bunch of drops from our new boss. And then I recall. Like, it was, I remember Nightmare being popular for, like, a bit there because everything was super expensive. And then I feel like, at least in my chat, there was, like, a shift of people going, like, you know, this boss is really boring and not very fun. And I, I don't like it anymore. 
And so it was like, wow, this is our our first big PVM update in however long. And like a Dude. lot of people don't like it, you know? Do you remember like on release when people were already calculating the rates to like full completion of Nightmare? And like yep. it was like day three or something. People were like, yeah, this will take six six thousand five hundred hours for full completion. This is like before they... I think they changed the drop rates twice to make them like more common. Yeah. Like within the first is, two weeks or something. Thank God. But I'm like, yeah. bruh, like, why are you releasing this stuff? Like, you you have to understand, like, like I understand you're trying to make this a lottery boss, but dude, these things aren't crazy. Like, these things aren't Tebos, you know? Yeah, like, they're not they're not like a, a game changing end game yeah. item. Yeah, like a Tebow, like you said. And, and, like and if, it, that, if, if Nightmare dropped like a Tebow and a Scythe, then it would make a little bit more sense. Like, okay, like uh, these are big boy items. Like, yeah, so they take forever. That's understandable. And I, I do remember when people calculated the drop rates and it was like, <laughs> okay, this boss is pretty grindy, you know, but we're going to stick it out because the items are good. Yeah. And then you saw those drop rates. And I think for so many people, their motivation just got destroyed. They were like, okay, yeah. I don't even like this thing in the first place. Now you're telling me I'm going to have to be here for a thousand hours? Like, no. Yeah. And if, if they would have just made the massing, like, if, if they would have made massing Nightmare actually a viable method, that would have been fun. I remember, like, on release, people were just massing it. And then you yeah, realize I did, like, how bad mans. that is. Yeah. Dude, if you were in an 80-man, I kid you not, if you were in an 80-man, just grinding out 80-man Nightmares, it would take you, like, I think it was... 72,000 80 mans to finally get a mace in your name on raid. What? 70 oh you would have to God. do that 72,000 times to get a mace. Um <laughs> that's hilarious. And, and to get an orb it was like 100,000. Like you'd have to do and if you went like that's... 8 times the rate, 800,000. <laughs> like like that's dude, disgusting. you are not thinking this through. Yeah. yeah. It, and and you know, I talked about this before a bit um in regards to like the average mentality of the RuneScape player now. But I think that is maybe why bosses or, you know, boss drop tables like Zolras are so popular. Because let's say, you know, I, I go to school, I have a full-time job, I come home, I play RuneScape for two hours a day. You could come home and you could kill Nightmare for, you know, at your two hours a day rate get for an bass. entire calendar year and not get <laughs> shit. Yeah. <laughs> that would be depressing. Yeah. You'd hate it. So people like the consistency. Yep. And I think... And you know, but that is the difference. Like Zora could drop. I agree, and I've been saying that. I think I, I was saying this before Bodhi made that ramble on it, talking about um, Zora. If it dropped nothing but scales and uniques, I've been yeah. advocating that for like years. Of, but the, that's the cool thing about Zora is Zora doesn't take six hundred hours to get a blowpipe. It takes right. maybe. Yep. I don't even know. Like. I'm not sure. Not not that many. Yeah. It's not that it's rare. Not, I don't like, even think it's over like 50. It's no, like, it, it it's shouldn't like 20 be. hours or something. Yeah, it's very obtainable. Yeah, so I'm just thinking like, okay, I can totally understand not getting anything until you get a unique, but you can't make stuff hundreds and hundreds of hours like that. Yeah, it's just unrealistic for most people, you know. So what do you think the drop rates will be for Raids 3? Do you think they're going to go insane, or do you think they're going to have something more obtainable like TOB? TOB, I... they did that. But besides how weird it is with, like, boosting, how you can just basically boost, like, a, a level 50 account, and they can get, like, yeah. really good rates on items, they yeah. nailed it with how commonly you get purples, I think. Yeah, TOB is really fun because you well of course you can go really dry but like like the probability you go super dry at tob is low because like you said it, it's the drop rate is very good yeah you and just so see it's, things it's, yeah it stays fun because of that so i i personally think you know it, it's all going to come down to how quick they are you know it, it depends how raids three is going to actually pan out the activity itself how long it's going to take and how easy how formable it is i i do think they're probably going to go with like a TOB esque system where you well, I, I mean, again, it's hard it's hard to predict like the whole like mm. maybe multiple purples per uh run type thing. Cause maybe they will do that. Maybe they'll make it so like if you have a perfect run, multiple people could get drops, maybe. And that that kind of stuff is gonna depend on what the drop rate is too. Yeah. So it's kind of a cyclical argument here because you just don't know. How, how hard it's going to be and stuff, but I, 
Yeah, I, 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 I'm a very big fan of TOB. Like, the whole, the loot system of TOB as a whole is probably one of my favorite things in this game. So, I, I hope it's similar. I, I do. I think it's good. Okay, I want to ask you what... This is kind of uh, a strange question, but um, there is a difference between seeing an item on the ground and seeing an item in a chamber's chest or a Peter Blood chest. What do you prefer? So, I think... I would say that I probably prefer the TOB or the raids thing. Now, now there is, there's you. You are right. It is very different. There, like when when you kill a monster and pop, it's there. Yeah. It is just a, the a immediate sudden rush of the dopamine. You yeah. know, it's just like, oh my god, there it is on the floor. And the lights now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love the loot beams. <laughs> loot too. beams are so cool. Me too. Um. So yeah, they they're 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 very different. I personally, as a, as a content creator, I guess you can, you know, raids and TOB, you can kind of milk the yeah. hype a little bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you're really, uh, you know, innovative like Alfie, you can also milk Nightmare. I remember he started the the whole like turn around really, really slowly. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you're a genius, man. Like, just, yep. just look at the you drop. You can always it. milk if it you're creative, it I yeah. guess. Yeah. Um, I I like I like the double. You know, it, it, it's the double dopamine. It's the, oh my gosh, I got a purple. That's exciting. Yep. And then, okay, now we get to be excited again because I'm going to see what it actually is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So overall, I, I would say I like the raids, the TOB system because it's it's kind of like double exciting or mm -hmm. it's exciting. It's at least initially exciting and then maybe it's disappointing. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> or as opposed to like, it's just there. But there is something very, it's, it's nostalgic just yeah. to like see, boom, see abyssal whip on the floor <laughs> they're both amazing and uh of course i think like you brought up a good point like you know you can kind of get that double excitement but on top of that raids and tob have the big ticket items which makes it even more exciting yep. if it was just getting you know a zamorak in hosta or something or bandos tassets it wouldn't be as crazy but sure. i really still like the ground thing it's just something nostalgic about seeing oh yeah like even like a piece i remember getting my first halberk a nightmare and being like yeah, oh my yep. god like that just looks so so clean. good on the floor yep like imagine seeing a tebow just on the lay floor. there like oh. for you like oh my god and everyone can see I it but only you can pick up. it up like, imagine that <laughs> yeah i i you know i think the raids and tob thing too is um another upside to it is well of course they kind of have to announce who gets the loot because otherwise you get a drop and just be like Nope, didn't get anything. <laughs> didn't uh, get anything. I'm just going to dip now, though. Peace, peace out. <laughs> but it's really cool. Um, you know, I know I know. a lot of times if I do CMs with my friends, if we're all in Discord, we'll all collectively, like, hide our chat boxes. And mm -hmm. then we'll, like, say in, ch you know, in voice, like, oh, did you guys get a purple? So it's fun to it, – it adds to that excitement, I guess, in, in a group of friends, like saying, oh, I have a, you know, a purple chest. Or TOB is just like right there. You know if somebody else got a drop. But overall, I, I do agree, though. Items on the ground are – Yeah, they, it's, they've it's got special. pros and cons to both. Yeah, they're enjoyable either way. So <clears throat> I want to ask – we're also going to cover some Twitter topics soon. Uh, okay. But before that um, – what are your thoughts on combat achievements? They've come out now just almost two months ago. What are yeah. your overall thoughts on it? I overall really like them. I think that there are some things that maybe could have been done away with. I know a lot of people, especially mains, like non-Iron Men, really didn't like the kill count things because yep. they had no reason to get kill count otherwise. But like a lot of Iron Men is like, oh, I've already done those. Yeah. Um... So I, I don't know. I, I can understand why they put the kill counts in there. Because it's it's like a baseline challenge. It's like, a, okay, you, you put the time in, you killed X amount of... But at the same time, it's not it's not an achievement per se to kill a boss X amount of times. Because it's not, it's not, it's not inherently challenging. It's yeah. not a, it's not a challenge. You just have to do it. Um, so, yeah, you know, personally, it's hard, it's hard for me to have... I guess that opinion, because as an Iron Man, there was basically nothing I didn't already have the kill count in. So it didn't really affect me, but I can understand where they're coming from. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I have, I have some 
friends and viewers that are like high-end PVMers, and I know a lot of them were like, they didn't like some of like the random stuff, you know, like the whole, like the, the like Darox Hydra. Oh, I'm thinking of Temporos. Like I had to do 50k, so I had done zero. Oh, <laughs> like this is horrible. Okay, okay, yeah. I'm not really sure why they put the skilling bosses in there. Well, I, skilling bosses. Yeah. That that was a little strange. I feel like that was just a reach I'm, for like extra content. But just to interrupt, um, like I can see the KC tasks. Uh, I'm a little bit um held back now because now I have to do 150 CMs and I had only done like 17 at the time. I'm getting yeah. there. I'm like 80 KC now. But I think it would have been cool for like KC tasks to only be like up to 50 like to get on to the high scores yeah yeah i feel like the that would have been like a really, minimum would be fair yeah, yeah, yeah. i feel like that would have been cool because then it's like if you see a grandmaster every single one of their things is filled out in the high scores it's like okay like looks clear yeah. yeah yeah i can agree with that um i guess i i disagreed with that like i know some people didn't like the random challenges like uh yeah, like use Darox and Hydra or, or things that weren't speed runs. They were just kind of like quirky. Just, I yeah. I like that personally. I thought that that was really, really fun. Whereas like, okay, yeah. So your actual hard challenges are like, you know, do your speed runs, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I, th I thought it was cool just to throw some fun ones in there so that even if... I think so too. Billy Bob 73, you know, he can't, he can't, he can't do a, a 630 CG, but he can do... The no potion one he can do. Like, he can do some things, right? And that's going to be motivating to say, like, okay, well, you know, I did some of this. I should keep working on these other more difficult ones. But I think the fun ones are enticing, I guess. They're maybe a little more obtainable for some people that aren't as good. And that might motivate them to keep working towards the harder ones. So, I like them. What do you think the hardest task is? Hmm... You know, I ha I haven't obviously. I, I I'm like very close to completing masters. I've done some of the grandmasters. I I've had a lot of people tell me that the ones that look super hard in the Inferno aren't actually that bad. But there's some of them that I read in the Inferno, and I'm like, that just sounds impossible. Like, because I'm you know I done the inferno a handful of times but i'm not like super good at it yeah. so to me you're probably in my the, spot where it's like you've done the inferno and you could probably complete like if you were held at gunpoint you're like complete inferno you could probably do it It'd probably take a bit but yeah like... yeah absolutely but i'm not like really good at it quote yeah. unquote yeah, and so yeah so the inferno ones look very difficult to me um and then i guess just some, like well especially the inferno speed run because i uh, I, I mean, I've done, I speed run when I need to. Otherwise I am really the opposite of speed run. I, I could care less about speed runs usually. Yep, like I same. usually, I've been doing a lot of, uh, like corrupted goblin lately and like doing the sub 630 CG. It was really fun. Like it was, it was cool to challenge myself to do it differently. Like, okay, you're in hurdy mode, get it done. Yep. Um, but like the what is it for the grandmaster like a sub 65 inferno yeah i i'm not saying i couldn't do it but I, it would be a colossal change in mindset <laughs> yeah like you you, you... so I'll, I'll just briefly share because i recently did it uh i got a 63 minute and it was on stream which is i don't even know <laughs> being on stream and do it well to be completely honest i fail i planked twice during that stream yeah. At like wave 60 plus twice. And then I oh. on the third run, I finally got it. But nice. um, I my previous best before that was like 90 minutes because I would just chill, you know? Just like, yeah, yeah. yeah yep. I would literally just sit there like, okay, I'm going to go take a piss, wait for my SGS to kind of like heal up. Right, you're just um, chilling. I think if you're like me, which I think you kind of are, just we're like, you're, <laughs> I'm not good at Inferno, but I can get it done. Yeah, I think you'd be pl pleasantly surprised if you just kind of do a couple runs, uh, trying to go semi fast. I will say though, you got to get Chinchampas. Like that shit speeds oh, up bet. things. I, I never use Chinchampas. That was the thing that would always slow me down. Is yeah, like you're I just barraging have. things nonstop, and dude, bring the chins, especially like the first thirty five waves. You don't even need to freeze any of the nibblers. Just chin them. Yeah, just chin them and get on with it. Yeah, like, that would be the biggest thing that... I, I think it comes down to confidence, right? Where I'd be like, okay, I'm like... 
70 HP, eh, we'll just blood barrage. We'll just top it off because why not, you yeah. know? You have to have a shift of mindset where like, okay, this is plenty of HP. I'm just not going to mess up my prayers and it's fine. Yeah. I have plenty of health, just don't screw up. So you have to you have to commit to yourself, you know? I will say, I think the toughest one is going to be don't drop below 50 HP. I still haven't done that one. Yeah, that, that that's one, that's tough too. That one's brutal. Like the last time I tried it, I I lost it at like wave 15. It was like like the just <laughs> double blobs. I you accidentally know, missed one flake and both mages hit me like a 29. I'm like, all right, well, okay. there, there's that run. <laughs> like, yep, God there that it. goes. Yeah. yeah, it's brutal. It is, which I think is a good thing too. Um, I've always been, I know I made videos talking about it back when like TOB came out and stuff because there, there's this thing that happens where whenever new pvm content comes out and like it's hard at first because it's brand new mm -hmm. people cry so hard oh, like, oh, yeah. this is way too hard this needs to be changed <laughs> and then and then just give it a even, year like, yeah and not even that like a, a few months yeah. later it's fucking cakewalk so yeah. i always tell people to like chill out when new stuff comes out like i know it's hard and it says it's hard but like it's not as hard as your brain is telling you it is yep. right now like you're you're, you're just panicking because you think it's impossible, but it's Wise not. words, honestly. We see that. So I... Okay. What were you doing on release of Inferno? Were you doing it or were you just watching streamers? I I was doing it. Um, And I, I was mostly just screwing around. I did have max gear. Um, Somebody lent my main, you know, like max gear. And I remember this is... Well, it's not, it's not, it's not even a flex because... I have, There's a really funny clip. I got... I, on day one, I made it to Zuck. Wow. Which was... I, I did. I did. It, it, beast. Well, or, or, it was, it was <laughs> no, day one. That's actually or, beastly. Okay, continue. I, it, it was either day one or day... It was maybe day two. It, but it was at the point where, like, not a lot of people were making it. Yeah. And I just remember there was, like... There was anger. There was, like... Bro, Mr. Mammal sucks. How the fuck did he make it, but I can't? Like, people were mad at me, right? <laughs> and, well, to be fair, the Inferno is... It, it, when you're beginning, there is... I always tell people there is definitely a degree of RNG. Like, you can have really great spawns, and you can make it to Zuck pretty easily, yeah. or your spawns can be terrible, and that's really going to put the pressure on you. Absolutely. Um, but I... I made it to Zuck, like, early on. It was either end of day one or day two or whatever. Um, and somebody in my chat said, walk the shield, don't run. Oh, God. I, I, <laughs> yeah, it, exactly what you think happened, happened. I spawned in. I got up to the shield. I turned my run off, immediately got behind it, and died. <laughs> Just, oh, like, instantaneously. No. And I was like, what the hell, you guys? You told me to walk. What is this? Oh, um, see, that was back then, when Zook was, like, so foreign. You didn't know what was going to happen. You didn't know when the things were going to spawn. You didn't know what tiles were safe. Nope, no, nope. And you, you had no clue what you were doing. And you were and probably getting like, dragged by the corners because, like, you know how you get dragged if you're, like, six tiles out too from far the corners? Away. Yeah, yeah, yep. Ugh. Yeah, and then it's, like, if you screw up, it's, like, okay, well, there goes two hours. Two hours Hope that they get you good can't spawns even... Again. Yeah. Yeah, you can't even consistently make it through. It's, it'd be one thing if you could just guarantee you'd make it back, but you might not even make it again. Uh, so yeah, the Inferno, that's a really good example. You know, the Inferno on release, people were like, oh my god, this is impossible. There's I'll never no way do this. Can do it. Yeah. Right, and then now, I mean, it. I still would say it's I, maybe not the hardest, but it, it's definitely one of the hardest things in the game, if not the hardest. Yeah, so like, yeah, no, true. It, it has stood up to the test of time. But it's not impossible, you know? Yeah, and if you dedicate a couple weeks to it, most players that have done other PVM could probably probably now get a cape in a couple weeks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with that. It's one of those things you just have to commit to learning. Yep. And have you have to have the mental to be like, you know what? I'm going to die. That's okay. That's just part of this. It's going to be all right. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think about combat achievement rewards? Do you think they're slightly underwhelming? So... Or do you think they're in a good see, place? I can see where people are coming from in regards to wanting the rewards to be better because they are difficult, right? So so the argument is like, wow, this is really hard. I should be getting rewarded for this. I don't necessarily agree with that. I think that the fact that, you know, the main, the main well, the, the Gommel's hilt thing, the, the tellies are, are neat. You know, they're not yeah. horrible or anything. I personally think the combat achievement diaries the rewards being a big flex that to me is good enough i i, I don't 
See, it's... Uh, I think, it's I, such I, a think I agree with you. For... It's such a difficult thing, right? Because if you say, well, it's one of the hardest things in the game, you should get good rewards for being good. I agree with that. But then part of me is like, okay, but we have to be realistic. You know, you don't want to lock... Like, if you had to do the Grandmaster Achievement Diaries to get a Twisted Bow... Like, that to me would yeah. be bad. Like, imagine... Like, you don't... Yeah, imagine, like, an enhanced Infernal Cape that has an additional four strength where it's just like, fuck, like, I got <laughs> to get this now, like... Right, right. And, I, like I said, I, I really do get both sides of the argument. I can see it either way. Ultimately, though, to me, I think, to me, Combat Achievement Diaries, they are, like, here is this optional content. If you want to challenge yourself and then get a cool flex item because of it, that's great. Do it. Yeah. But we're not going to force you because we know these are really, really hard. I know that's, you know, I just talked about, like, people crying about things being yeah. too hard. So this is kind no, of contradictory, but... but I, I, th I think I agree with you. And the thing is, like, combat achievements, if you're not a max player with, like, all these endgame items, it's it, you, out, you actually are locked out of it, you know? Yeah. Like, like there's certain you, things like, you're just actually locked out of. Yeah, like, the average person probably can't do a sub-65 Inferno, like, just the average person anyway. Yeah. If, if you if you don't have a Twisted Bow, the, no shot. Like, Even the like, Nightmare like one, getting, like, a sub-730 without, like, a Scythe and Inquisitors or something. I mean, I know I know it's possible if you just get good RNG, but it's like... But very hard, yeah. Yeah, like you gotta Extremely get... Extremely You gotta get lucky on that and not miss ticks, you know? Yeah. So, overall... I like it. I, I think it's probably for the best that it's nothing game changing, but instead it's like, hey, look at my Zuck head. Look yeah. how good I am. Yeah. And it, But it's not like, I have to do this so, to keep up, you know? Me, personally, uh, I, I really love the clue perks. I, th I thought that was, like, the coolest reward for, like, easy through elites. Yeah, it's nice. I think one thing, this is, I've already kind of spoken about this on Twitter, but I think what would be cool is if, if, you, if you complete the master tier then you get a 5% increase on master clues coming from lower tier caskets. Ooh, yeah, that'd be so, nice. So it's like something where it's like, this is actually a buff and it's nice, but it's, again, it's not essential to get it. It's right, and it's not like overpowered per yeah. se. You know, and it's... then Grandmaster would be 5% increase on mimics. So Ooh, just, I like that, yeah. Just very subtle. Oh, and the other thing, um, have you used the, I think it's like Morai Wreck or whatever, tell you? Like, yeah, yeah, on the on the little hilt you get, yeah. I think what would be really cool is if that teleport actually teleported you in that little bank area. So it becomes like yeah. the best in slot for banking. And I know that, I know that might sound like, oh, that's too OP, you know, you're like, but I think what would be so cool is if the Grandmaster's like, that's the Grandmaster bank, you know, like. This yeah, is where the instead of the crafting guild, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I I like that too because it's, you know, it, it would it would give more utility to it, and you know, people would say, oh, it devalues my crafting cape. Well, yeah. if you can complete the grandmaster challenges, I think that's a little bit, a little more worthy than blowing molten yeah. glass in your bank. <laughs> like, you know, I mean, I, yeah. So I I don't mind that idea. That would be really cool if that was like you said. That's the neat bank. That's yeah. The, that's like the sh <laughs> the neat bank. <laughs> Just I mean, like, it'd be it'd be cool to see. No, like that's exactly what it would be used. It was like, okay, these are the beasts. Like these are where the beasts go to bank. Like you know, and then the, the max players all go to the crafting guild, what whatnot. But but there is a downside to it. You got to have that hilt, you know. So with, yeah, when you have a yeah. max cape, it's just super convenient. But that hilt would be the downside to it. So people that are like, oh, it's too op. I don't know. I think that would be Minus really cool. One inventory slot. No, I I'm on board with that. I actually I like that idea a lot. To be honest. Yeah. And, like, That'd be even sick. if you were, you know, just a master, you'd still get your five tellies, which, honestly, I think they should be upped. Or I think it's three and five and then unlimited. I think it should be five, ten, and then unlimited. But that's... Yeah. It's... I could I could agree with that. There there are some things with the... um, I feel the same way about, like, the regular Achievement Diaries, too. The way that the tellies scale up is, like, very awkward. Yeah. Um, it used to be way worse, too. It like yeah. One, it's one, three, <sighs> unlimited or something. Yeah. Yeah, you th it's. It, I think the one that comes to mind is on my hardcore. I was doing uh, Vorkath, and I had the Fremnik boots three, 
and it's one telly a day, and then Elite <laughs> is unlimited. Yeah. How are you going to go from one to unlimited? Like, yeah. uh, like there should be like a a, a gap, or like a, you know, a, something yeah. to bridge this because this just doesn't make any sense. One. Okay. Yeah, one to unlimited. That's funny. Yeah, I think the whole limitations on teleports. I'm glad they they finally fixed not fixed, but they changed the achievement diary cape to unlimited because yeah. like those teleports are really good for clue scroll steps. But as soon as you've used your 10 daily teleports, it's almost like, damn, I probably shouldn't oh. even do any more clue scrolls today because it's like, I got to use the these val- like, yeah. slower routes. Slows me down now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. It's, they, they could definitely use some, some balancing on the tellies. Okay. Looking at the Twitter topics. Um, I had the first one I see is by Colton and he asks, how do you stay motivated? Not get bored with OSRS content. That is a great question because I get that one a lot whilst I'm, you know, streaming too. I think ultimately the biggest thing that you can do, because I, you know, I feel this, you know, personally too. The most important thing to staying interested in this game is you have to have a goal. You you absolutely have to have a reason that you're logging in. If you just log in and just, well, I'll figure it out, you are you're going I, I guarantee you you will like lose motivation. You have to have something set in front of you. So let's say you just started an Iron Man, okay? I, I think it's important to set yourself goals and stages, okay? So, let's say I just made a new Iron Man, and I think my first big goal should be Barrow's Gloves. Okay, so I'm going to set myself a goal of, of getting Barrow's Gloves. But if you can't play that much, that goal might overwhelm you. You might think, oh my god, I have so much to do. Set sub-goals along the way, okay? So, you're it's Monday. You're going to log in. Today, I'm going to do... I'm going to do... Uh, plague city and biohazard and then i'm gonna get my ardun cloak one check i got all those done you know i got a new cape it's progress towards my barrows gloves so like that that to me is the key to being interested in this game you have to have goals you have to have a reason to log in otherwise the game it does get boring like you'll log in and just go what do i do yep um so that that's overall my advice goals and sub goals and if even that isn't working I tell people this too. I probably, I, maybe I shouldn't say this. It's a game. If you're not having fun, you don't have to play it right <laughs> Just now. Just log you out. Can, you can go play something else. If you feel like playing, come back and play it. It, it, is, it is a game. You're supposed to want to play it. It's supposed to be fun. If it's not fun, especially, I mean, it, it's. I guess it's a little different as a content creator. Sometimes you got to suck it up, play it, whatever, right? But like, if you're just playing just because you want to, especially then, just if you don't want to play, just don't play it right now. You know, take a break. Yep. So that's my advice. <laughs> so you say you have not burnt out of this game for over a for just you haven't not played this game for more than a week since like what two thousand eight two thousand six two thousand late yeah. late two thousand six. So that's like fifteen years now. Yeah. So what um, is it? Do you have you just always had a goal, or is this game just are you just built different? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think I'm built differently, no. I, I think that I have always done a good job of setting goals. Um, and, you know, it's absolutely a dash of addiction. Like, let's not beat around the bush. Like, we're, we're, all, at le- we're all at least a little bit RuneScape crackheads. A little bit. Like, we, we all function with this as part of our daily routine. But um, I think it... Yeah, it, it's always been having a goal. And then... You know, being a content creator, I think, has its own motivation as well. Not, I'm, I'm not even talking about, you know, making money. I'm talking about, like, it's motivating to know that I'm not just logging into play RuneScape today. I'm going to go talk to these people about my day. I'm going to go see my, you know, my friends, if you will. That has its own set of motivation to it as well. Um, But I will say this, too. I, sometimes I do get a little burnt out. You know, there there are some days where... You know, as much as I love streaming and, and content creating and all that jazz, you do anything eight hours a day for years. You Sometimes you have days where you're like, meh. And it's, it's not like, yeah. oh, I don't want to do this. It's like, you know, I don't, I, I could see myself doing something else right now. I want to go watch TV or, or you know, whatever. Yep. Um, and so, you know, don't, don't always assume that a content creator you watch is just 
having the time of his life. And it's, like some days, sometimes you're off too, you know? Yeah. You just, you're not always feeling it, I guess. Absolutely. Uh, what would you say to somebody? Okay, well, I guess we all kind of know the answer to this already, so I probably won't even ask it. But I think <laughs> a lot of us have gotten to that point. I say a lot of us, not all of us, but a lot of us have gotten to a point where you feel like you're done with the game permanently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then you realize a week later how dumb you were for even thinking that you could you know move on from this game <laughs> yep <laughs> no i i think everybody has done that where it's like oh i'm I, I'll, I'll say as a joke too they'll be like ah i'm quitting i'll be like okay see you next week <laughs> see, see, see you next tomorrow. week dude yeah see you after not, lunch. not gonna happen yeah. it, no. it is it's so it's so hard to quit this game because yeah. it's just such a especially if you like I think if you, you know, if you PBM and you get rare drops or you're an Iron Man and you're completing goals, it's just such a constant cycle of these dopamine hits that like this game is like a drug, basically. Yep. It, like, like you just it, it's a constant cycle of dopamine hits that are not super hard to obtain. Well, they can be if you go really dry on stuff, but like especially if you're a new account and you're constantly like completing stuff and whatever, it's just it's just candy for your brain. It just, it keeps giving you these little spikes of feel good. So you keep going, you know? Absolutely. And I just think, I think it was before I made an Iron Man. So I was a main for like a year. Yeah. And there were months where like, I wasn't playing as much. And I was like, okay, I'm probably done with this game. Like that's what I was thinking. Cause like, all I would do is like kill wyverns for money. And then I was like, what was the point of having money? Like, what am I trying I'm not to not even playing it. Right, yeah. right. And I was, like, really focused on school, and I was, like, hanging out with girls and stuff. So, there's just, like, way sure. more things in my life. But I remember th I, I even wrote this down because I knew I didn't want to forget how I felt. <laughs> but yeah. when you get that re-ignite, re, uh, like, this reignition of um, motivation to play, it is yep. – crazy like yep it's all you want to do yeah it's like what? holy shit yep. like this is all i'm thinking about like yep and you it's weird. engulfed in it yeah and it's weird because it's like you didn't think you'd ever be able to get back to that point yeah like you absolutely. thought you were like burnt and just like you're like oh it's just a game i don't i don't need it but then you just have this weird phase where it's like oh my god i need this I'm back. Yep. And you're like i you even think about the game like in your life and you're like oh my god like imagine like going in and killing this boss or just even chopping this tree it sounds so fun <laughs> yeah absolutely i uh when when my when my hardcore died a few months ago i definitely went through like it was so surprising to me because like the whole time i played my hardcore i was like people were like oh what are you gonna do if it dies and i'm like eh i don't think i'll really care i'll just keep playing it whatever you know I was so, I was so wrong. Cause I, you know, even sometimes I'd poke fun at, you know, remake Andes or whatever. When I died, the motivation was, it was weird. It, it like hit me like a brick where I was like, wow, I, I actually don't feel like I have a reason to play this account anymore now. It like really messed yep. with me. Um, and I, I went through that period for a bit where I streamed and I was just like, God, I have no idea what I'm doing. Like what, yeah. what the hell am I doing today? You know? And and then it came back. It, it took a while where I thought about what I wanted to do. And then I haven't played Dead Man mode in like forever. Uh, but with all the changes they made to this one, I was like, okay, I'll give it a try. And so I did Dead Man mode right on release. And I was like, oh, this is super fun. You know, it. so all it takes, I think, if you are feeling burnt is sometimes you got to do something new. Just yeah. try, and not even a new account, but like new content, new, just something that'll that'll spark it, if you will. Absolutely. Okay, I think we might have already covered this, but Randall Hydro Hydroelectric asks, looking back on all you've done in OSRS, what would you say is your fondest memory of the game? I know you said something about the early release and getting yeah. that amulet of accuracy. Yeah, that amulet of accuracy was crazy. I, I, I just remember being absolutely ecstatic. Um, well, and I guess more along with the early release, I did a lot of Barrows, like, ASAP. Like, mm -hmm. Barrows is one of my favorite things to do in this game. I don't even know why. I just... It was, like, nostalgic. my favorite moneymaker. Yeah, it's it's nostalgic. And when I was a kid, I did it for money. And um, and you get drops. Like, that's the thing. The it, it's... 
Yeah, that maybe is part of it. The, the drop rate is common enough that you're usually not going to go super dry. You're going to see something every, like, you know, couple of hours, probably. Yeah. Um, but I remember doing Barrows on release, and on, like, my very first chest, I got a Darox Helm. Now, this is pre-Grand Exchange, so I have to go to Varrock West and try to find a buyer <laughs> for this thing. And I sold it for, like, a mil. And, like, this is, I mean, this is, like, right after Old School came out. Like, that's a lot of money, mm -hmm. you know? I... I was just ecstatic. Um, and then, of course, you know, as far as... If we're talking about, like, in-game memories, specifically, uh, well, getting getting Third Age was a very big deal for, you know, my channel, like, as a content creator. Dude, speaking of your Third Age, that that clip is ingrained in my mind, by the way. Your orgasm that, you The had. voice? <laughs> yeah, the it's orgasm so you had, or the nerdgasm they say and yeah, i still remember so it was in the lumber yard correct it was yep yeah. whenever i go there now i actually think of that clip when you got third age <laughs> and i do a lot I of do, hard I mean, clues i do too i i, I we, my chat refers to it as the third age spot for me uh that was nuts i mean that was that in, in all the you know like i said i played brunescape for like 15 years now that is the only third age piece i've ever gotten and like my i i got 99 slayer pre eoc and i did all my hard clue scrolls so like i've done tons and tons of clues over the years and that mm -hmm. was my that was my one and only so that that was that was really cool that was a very special memory see i think that they <sighs> clue scrolls i don't know who was the one that kind of came out with that if that was the I think that was the Gowers, right? Like, Clue Scrolls Probably. came out in, what, 2005, or 2005, I think? Or was yeah, it that I sounds know. about right. But I'm just like, God, they nailed it. Like, Yeah, it's they, such a, a unique idea. Like, it, Yeah, and, and they come out with something that's not best in slot, but it just looks badass. Like, third yep. age, like, damn. You yeah, see it, that it, stuff, what, like, even even now, like you know, like let's say like full third age melee, you know it's not that expensive anymore, yeah. but it still is like, oh damn, look at that, like yeah, catches yeah. your eye. See, I think uh, I remember. So I did the dragon full helm grind. That was honestly to anyone listening, if you were if you were like a collection log Andy trying to go for that eventually, that was one of my most favorite grinds. Like just chilling at the mithril dragons in that little cavern just going down yep. there here and there and like you know that was fun and those chewed bones oh they nailed it with the chewed bones i oh, hate yeah i chewed hate bones how are addy awesome. addy and rune dragons are just like you just get the drop you know yeah I really yeah, the chewed like bones thing is that. sweet oh yeah i got really uh, um i got my dragon full helm on my I want to say third shoe bone. I got really lucky. <laughs> yeah. And that was so exciting because yeah. it was so unexpected. It was just like, oh, let me toss these chewed bones in real fast. And I went, oh my God, I, I actually got it. Yeah. Like, you don't, you don't think you're going to get it, but there it is. See, and it's totally cool that it's just a flex item and it has like no real use besides just yep. maybe a semi tank helm. Yeah. But, but it just looks cool. Yeah. yeah. But honestly, um, this is like the kind of selfishness in me, but I really wish that I don't know. Like I know the Nate is not face guards like best and slot whatnot. I really wish that like the Dragon Full Helm almost shared the like plus six strength just so I could rock that over. I know it just sucks I, that you I, can't I, ever rock it without being inefficient, you know? Because it's so yeah. badass. I totally agree. <laughs> it it design wise, there's just nothing like it in the game. It, oh, it is so extremely cool. unique design wise. <laughs> it, you look like Predator, dude. It's you so do. Cool. It, yes. You literally look like Predator and it's it, it, it's huge. The helmet is colossal. <laughs> yeah. It's so cool. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's just the shame. It's like one of those things like third age. Like so I have three pieces of third age. Yeah. Um and I have the plate body. You got the plate body, correct? Uh plate legs. Oh, it wasn't the plate body? No, it was plate legs. I swear to God, like in my mind, it's the plate. Okay. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I guess I can see that now that you say that. So you got plate. I would kill for the plate legs, by the way, because I have the plate body. Of course, you'd probably kill for the plate body. Yeah. If it was I, on you the know what my account. favorite piece is? is? The kite shield. The third age kite shield is beautiful. See, that was my first piece, the kite shield. And then I got the plate body. Damn. That's awesome. And then I got the, the robe bottoms. 
Oh yeah. But oh the the robe top is sweet. Oh yeah. Now I really want it because I have the bottoms. But I'm like, yeah, uh, of course, dude. If I get the third age plate legs, I I, I can flex the sh- the shield, the plate legs, the plate body, and then the dragon full helm. Like you don't even need the oh, third yeah. age. Oh helmet yeah. Because that'd when be you sick. have a dragon full helm. Yeah, that'd be sick. Yeah, that's like those are goals like those are like the hashtag goals for my account is like complete a third age set or get close like plate legs or the third age robe top would be i would literally bin my ancestral i would never wear my ancestral again if i got the robe top i just like no yeah you i just, will lose you just like it that much this. yep yeah yeah i don't blame you <laughs> oh god okay um hugh jass wants hugh jass wants hmm. to uh or he says this he says, tell us about the early days of streaming, making videos on YouTube. Also, where did the name Mr. Mammal come from? Okay. Um, so I, I guess I can do that part first. So the name Mr. Mammal comes, it's pretty random. So when I got my uh, Xbox 360 back when it would have been the, the Christmas after Modern Warfare 2 came out. So like, I don't even know what year that would be. Um... At any rate, so I, I got an Xbox 360 for Christmas. Thanks, Mom and Dad. Appreciate it. Uh, I randomly generated an Xbox gamer tag. I did not know what to name myself. So I, I went through a bunch of, you know, random generations, and I ended on Explosive Mammal. Now, <laughs> I'm I'm a kid. Like, I'm, I'm like however old I was. I thought that was hilarious. I'm like, okay, that's the one right there. We're done. So I wanted my... I was like, okay, you know, I guess I'm just going to kind of like brand around that. So I wanted my RuneScape name to be similar to Explosive Mammal. So then I landed on Mr. Mammal. And that's it. That's... So that, is, that how, is, how long has that been your name for? Like, what um, year, I guess, in RuneScape did you change? Or was it just old I think, school? I think it was a little bit before old school. Maybe like 2011. Okay. Something like that. So it's been for like probably like 10 years now, roughly. Um, so that's the origin of the Mr. Mammal name. It's a randomly generated Xbox gamer tag. It has tag a nice ring I... to it. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I, I, it could have been, you know, it could have been way different. I, I was thinking about that. I could have generated something totally random, like happy cactus. See, I could be Mr. Yeah. Cactus. I mean, I have, I have no idea, you know, it's totally. No, I, th- I think it's almost like psychology like that. The sort of like alliteration with the MMM just like yeah mm. yeah there's a lot of m's in my name so it, yeah. it kind of works yeah um so that that's where it came from and then the early days of content creating so i started excuse me sorry um i started making progress videos and that's you know kind of still my thing um because i didn't know what else content to make i was just like i'm just gonna record what i do in game basically yep um that was really really fun and i learned a lot over the years because if i go back and i watch my early progress videos it was a lot of i i pretty much just put every single thing i did into a video like like i would just record me completing every slayer task so i have a i had a lot of old videos where i just didn't get a whole lot done see but i I don't know the thing is back then it, it it was just me literally doing exactly what I wanted. It was just like, this is what I think is going to be cool. Mm-hmm. I, this is what I think is going to be good in a video. So I'm going to do that. Which I, I think when content creators are smaller, there is almost more of a... Well, not that big content creators are disingenuous, but it, it there's less feedback to work with. So you just literally do exactly what you think is the best. Yep. Um, so... You know, it, it was it was different making content then when you have less viewers, um, and you know I started I started with YouTube. I started out doing YouTube. I you know didn't really get that many viewers, and then when I got third age, I got featured on uh, Chris Archie and on Spark Mac Live, and so that gave my channel quite a bit of publicity, um, and I started growing a bit from there. And then, you know, late, late 2013, Twitch as a website as a whole was starting to grow quite a bit. And so I I was getting a lot of comments on YouTube saying, oh, you should try streaming on Twitch. So like late 
2013, I started streaming on Twitch. Um, and that was really, really cool. I think more so than YouTube, because, you know, YouTube is still, I just kind of put together my progress videos and like, here you go. Here's my video. Hope you like it. Yep. Streaming definitely changes when you get a bigger audience. It, it starts to feel a little bit different. Um, I, one of my fondest memories is when I was a kid, you know, still because I started streaming when I was like a sophomore in high school. So, you know, I was still at home with my parents in high school when I started streaming. And I just remember sitting there and somebody said, yo, I donated. And I was like, it was like my, my first donation ever. Um, and back then there was no like stream labs. And if there was, I, I didn't know about yeah. it. I didn't know how to set it up. So I literally just had to go to my email and check. And I saw that I got an email from PayPal saying that somebody sent me money. And I was just like, no shot. Somebody just actually like, gave me blown. like, like there's no way this just <laughs> happened for real. But yeah, it was, I don't know. It, it, it's, it's very, it's very, you know, humbling to, to, I guess, kind of go back and look at it. Cause Absolutely. you know, I, yeah, I started with, it started as, as, as a kid and I, I'm very, very fortunate that I got started as early as I did, I think. And not even, I know everybody does like the, I, I don't mean to like talk down on myself. I don't think I really do anything extraordinary content creation wise. Like I kind of just show up and do my thing. Like I, I don't, yeah. I don't have like crazy production value. I don't, I don't, I'm not really like amazing at the game. I just kind of show up and just play. Right. So I think that had I showed up way later than I did when it was already getting pretty saturated, I, I don't feel confident that I'd be doing what I'm doing right now. So I think that, the timing was good for me. I got in before it was really saturated. And it yeah. also helped that, you know, I wasn't an adult with bills and responsibilities. I got to just kind of focus on this if I wanted to. Absolutely. Um, so. No, I, I completely see that. Uh, on the, I guess, kind of countering it in a way. I will say anybody that does feel like they want to be a content creator and stuff like I don't think it ever it really is too late, especially... Oh, no, I don't think so either. Yeah, yeah, and... But I will say, like, there is obviously so much benefit in starting early. Like, you see any of, like, the biggest streamers? Like, just yeah. think of, like, you know... I don't know, Ninja, Shroud, you know? Any of these people? Right. Like, if they had started a year ago, like, <laughs> they wouldn't be who they are, clearly, you know? No, yeah, surely so, not. So, yeah, uh, it... it and, and for most people, unless you unless you have like a connection or something, it usually does take years and years. Like you'll, mm -hmm. you'll slowly build and then it'll kind of like take off. But unless you have a connection, like there are some streamers, of course, that are amazing. Let's say they, they stream Valorant, right? And they're amazing at it. They're a pro player. That's different, right? Because you have, you have a way Absolutely. of getting super big, like super fast. Um, but for, you know, a lot of like standard content creators, it's going to take you years yeah. to kind of build up. And I even see... You know, I mean, I, I look at you, I look at Bodie, I look at Foe, Curtis, all of like the, I I say giants of the old school section, you know, not like old school is a huge section or not, but I right, see you guys right. as like the pillars and, um, and I'm missing names of course, but right. Uh, like you guys have been streaming for years, like nearly a decade of content creation, maybe over a decade of content creation, you know? Yeah. And it's just like some people I think miss that, like the consistency and like i mean i see foe like i'll i'll pop in his stream and he's just doing his thing it's like it's because he's already built that community and right so you have i have those people that like you for you no ex matter what you exactly know? and so I, I see somebody's like okay imagine if foe were to start streaming right now with everything like nobody knows who he is and he puts on the same exact production yeah like he wouldn't probably pull that many viewers because nobody knows who he is yet. You know, it's just like, yep. It's, it's one of those things where like str content creators that are big, they're like, like you have to grow it. But once you grow, you're big because you're big. Like, exactly. like you're popular because they already know who you are. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And it's not to say that like big content creators don't provide good content. It's just that 
It's like you, you don't said, have to go he's... above and beyond. You're just like chilling at that point. You know? Exactly. I yeah. A, a lot of it, that's what it feels like. A lot of days on stream, I pretty much just show up and talk to people. You yeah, know, it's just me hanging out pretty much. And yep. that's kind of like the beautiful part of it is like there isn't. As soon as you kind of feel comfortable in content creation after a few years, it's like that's kind of like the, the thing you should look forward to is like you don't have to always be under this horrible pressure to like oh like. I'm going to lose my entire audience if I do. It's like, no, nah, like once you build up a good base, like you're, you can kind of just chill, you know, somewhat. To an extent. Yeah. yeah. So I can't even imagine being like an IRL streamer. They have to, oh God. Like you have to like <laughs> go out of your way to like make content like that. That would be exhausting. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't even imagine being like an See, IRL some people streamer. are just more adventurous and like energetic like That's that. true. That's I true. feel like RuneScape like like players in general it. are very comfortable and introverted for the most part and just you know they're they're cool playing games all day yeah exactly it, it suits some people better you know what i feel bad for is um and again this is coming from me everyone's different but i feel bad for people and i'm not gonna name names but people that like start streaming with insane content yeah and yep. then it's like you have to upkeep that shit now you know like, yeah because now they have an expectation yep. <laughs> yeah i'm like yeah uh like you're gonna get a huge you know spike of growth like initially like way more than like an average stream like i started off really slow I was pulling like three to ten viewers for the first three months you know yep. just i was yeah. building from nothing didn't have a youtube or anything but then you see yeah which is the hardest part yeah. you know, starting out is hard oh <laughs> yeah but you see these people that start off uh, doing just crazy stuff. You're like, oh god, like, good luck. No, people <laughs> like, are keeping this, you know, like, oh god. yeah, people are gonna people are gonna come to expect this, man. Good luck, yeah. like, yeah, yeah. No, that like one comes to mind. Um, I so uh, I've hung out with Ice Poseidon like a few times at RuneFest. Um, because mm -hmm. you know he used to play RuneScape, so yeah, he used to watch his uh, They invited they invited him out to RuneFest. Um, and like it's crazy what you saw on stream back in the day from ice poseidon versus what you saw in person off stream was just so different <laughs> like he was such like a chill like <laughs> he's just a he's just a nice dude and then yeah. but but then his 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 Persona. audience came to expect this this fucking wild shenanigans right yep so then he had to try to upkeep that and it just it wasn't feasible and he just wasn't happy so and i think now he's kind of doing his own thing he's he's more chill he's which is you know good for him uh, yeah. but th that's an example that comes to mind i think of is just you know meeting ice poseidon and being like wow this guy is super chill like, this is the nice guy like you know stream is just it's a persona you know it is yep. do you, i don't know if you've ever watched fat clouds before it um, rings a bell but i don't think so yeah so uh, fat clouds he, it was funny is he really he similar similarly reminds me of ice poseidon in a way He's actually from Florida as well. Or I don't know if he's from Florida, but he was in Florida at yeah. the time. And so he just really crazy, super energetic. And then I remember going into a Discord, like a, like a video call with some like him and some of his friends and stuff. And he was like just chilling, like the most calm yeah. dude of all time. And uh, yeah, it's just crazy to uh, kind of see the difference of people like on stream versus like off. So, yeah i, I totally think yeah having to have a persona is is difficult yeah the, the the more genuine you can be when you stream the better longevity you're gonna have oh yeah Absolutely. yeah having a persona makes it a lot harder to do day in and day out i think yeah and i uh i think there are i mean an, personas it's hard to say because like I would say I sort of have a stream persona and that's just sure. me trying to be as engaging as possible. Obviously I'm not just going to do the exact same thing I do off stream, which is sit here in silence. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. I, and I'm the same way. Like I, I you know, when I stream, I, I usually kind of self sort of, yeah, you lift yourself up a little bit, you know, you're a yeah. little more energetic or whatever than you would be off stream. Yeah. But there's a difference between like, acting entirely different, yeah you know? yeah so okay semtex asks well he asks one thing again it's like those memories but he has a second question how many times do you think you've shook the banana plushie so far and i have something to input 
where did that banana gimmick come from so i will i will start with your question then okay. um so i like shortly after i got i got my sub button in like the summer of 2014 and shortly afterwards i was i i wanted a sub thing right i i i wanted a sub thing i i wanted some sort of like mascot something something to yeah. say or to do you know and I, I couldn't figure out what it was. I had a really hard time coming up with something. And then I went to a fair and I played like some carnival games and I won this this Rasta banana, right? So I brought it home and my chat just thought it was really funny. I don't know, they, they, they thought my banana was, was really, really funny. And so... <laughs> Just so I, random. Yeah, it, it's extremely random. It is extremely random. Uh, but here we are. I don't know. It's, it's not. So how many times know. do you think you've shook it? I. It's it's like so hard to say. So if I I'm I that's what that's why I started with that. I'm I'm trying to pull up my stream lab <laughs> to like get a sample of like if it tells me how many subs I had in an average year. Yeah. <laughs> well. How so many like times each... do you shake it per sub? Per, okay. <laughs> per sub, I gotta play this out. I'm gonna go with like 10. <laughs> I, I, I would say I probably, and I have I have oh a method. I like, I hold it and then I use like the my P sign fingers, my middle finger <laughs> yeah, and my I, index I finger. And I, I just push it forward with those two fingers. <laughs> I, I would say ballpark 10 shakes per sub. So... Damn. You know, I like I said, I've had a sub button since 2014, so a seven lot. years of however, <laughs> however many subs I've gotten over the course of seven years. And this is this is not the original banana. Um, so what I did and what I've done in the past is this is like my I think my third one maybe. Uh, when I did charity streams in the past, um, I would say the top donator of the charity stream will get the banana. So I, oh, I've wow. mailed that I've mailed out and like signed like three bananas. Um so this is not the original one anymore. Uh but yeah, they they it's funny, you can see on them they have a a very definite crease in the <laughs> middle from, from where they get like folded over when I <laughs> so Oh my god. They get used. That's awesome though because it's like you know, as a streamer, like I would encourage any streamer to come out with their own little like gimmick or something, like, just something that's like them. It's like that banana thing is you. Like, if, it is. You know? People people associate that with me. And the funny thing is too is like people say like, "Oh, are you tired of shaking the banana?" It is the most unconscious like <laughs> reaction. <laughs> like, yeah. do you think it even crosses my mind? No shot. Like I hear my sub sound in my headphones, and I'm like a zombie. Like my 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 body just unconsciously does the thing. Like it, it's instantaneous. Do you ever think of just how crazy it, it? Like I don't know. I know this is like completely off topic, but how crazy it is to be a human and just come up with these like subconscious things. Just, just yeah, just doing stuff. It is it is wild to think about. How like our yeah how how we work subconsciously the things we do without realizing <laughs> yeah. like and the, it that, is it is it's cool I I even think of um I remember like solo nightmare like when I first started yeah. doing that you had to you had to think so much and doing mm -hmm. it on streams like you can't look at the chat there's no way you gotta right you have to think about and then switching a prey melee and yeah and then you start building the muscle memory like your brain just starts it just knows what to do without yeah. you like actively thinking about oh, it oh yeah it you knows. are not you're not even there it's like driving nope. a car you know like a long yep. road trip you are out like you you don't even realize you're driving a car you're like okay this is not even safe but like it is because you're... i think about that all the time there's it's it's like there's a, a name for the phenomenon but i forget what it is but it, it's yeah it's it's like you start at point a and then all of a sudden you're at point b and you're like oh like I, that's I not drove, good i, just I don't remember that, I? <laughs> yeah, like, I don't yeah. Remember any of that it's I'm like weird. extra bad with that because I live in uh, I live in North Dakota, so there's very little traffic. So like, I can, I can drive like, so I live I don't know like four hours from my parents. I literally can get on the interstate and I can set my cruise and probably not take it off at all for four hours. Like I like I can just 
That's you know amazing. How easy it, That's so you know nice. how easy it is to just like like you're talking about that point A to point B and you're there thing. Oh god, it's it's terrible. It's Dude. I have no idea what I do. So I'm I'm from Oregon and we had family. Okay. I actually have family in North Dakota as well, but I have family in North Carolina. Okay. And so we would take road trips, like 48 hour road trips across the country, Oof. like yeah. multiple times. And uh, I will say, like, so like when I got older, when I turned like 15, I had my permit and I would uh, drive. And then I think we went again when I was like 17. But yeah, like, I really wish there were highways like similar to north dakota where it's like you don't have to deal with anybody you know because sometimes you oh, start getting that like crazy. anxiety of like there's a dude that's like riding your ass or something and it's just oh like, that's God, the like, worst oh, you start no. overthinking yeah. things you're just like this is just annoying but yeah getting those when you're driving at night though and you get those like long highways you're just like oh yeah it's wide open yeah it's 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 crazy i mean there, there certainly is downsides to living in north dakota but like some of the upsides is just yeah there's like no traffic anywhere and it snows chill. a lot right like big time yeah it's um so we get like less snow than like let's say minnesota does for example but um let me look at this up really fast i don't, I don't want to misquote this um because people are gonna you know there, there's this weird thing there's this there's, there's totally a thing called like weather ego or like, <laughs> if I say it's cold, somebody from Canada's like, oh, you, you don't, don't know what know, cold dude. is. Dude, you don't even. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> if I. Okay, here we go. If I Google this, this is, I mean, you know, maybe debatable, but I, I just Googled the coldest cities in America. North Dakota is numbers two, three, and four. So, okay. uh, like Fairbanks, Alaska is number one. And then three cities in North Dakota are two, three, and four. Wow. So, okay. I mean, it gets it gets it gets pretty cold. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> yeah, my mom grew up there, so. At least yeah. A little bit of her it's... childhood, she would just say like, like, so I'm from Oregon, where we would get like two inches of snow, and yeah. they cancel school for a week. Oh, and then yes, yeah, yeah, and then she was like, yeah, like we would have like four feet of snow and you just like you go to school you know like, yeah it was like eh, the school bus will figure it out you'll, you'll get there yeah it, it, it would take a lot for it took a, it takes a lot to cancel school here um and I, I always love so you know i obviously through streaming you talk to people from all over the world but like the coldest day that i can remember recently um it was like it was like new year's day of i think 2017 i want to say with the wind chill factored in, because that's pretty big, it's it's very windy here. We have, mm -hmm. like, no trees, so it's always windy. With the wind chill, it was negative 62 Fahrenheit, Jesus I want to say. Christ. Which is, like, it... I can't even... So, like, it does get to a point where once it's a certain coldness, you, you can't tell that big of a difference, because it's just really goddamn cold, no matter what. Um... But I always tell people to imagine what that's like if you're from somewhere warm. Well, you maybe can't even imagine it at all. But, like, let, let, let's say you live in a place where Oregon gets, like, at least, you know, you get snow, right? So yeah, like, there, it, it, and, it, there, and there are places that get a lot colder in Oregon. Sure. I was yeah. from a more temperate area. So I always say, like, if you can imagine a cold winter, whatever cold is to you, yeah. I want you to take that and then make it so, like, things hurt. Like the inside of your nostrils hurt. Your skin, like it, like it. The difference is, it, 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 like the air hurts you. I would say is the best way I can describe Jesus. it. It's 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 pretty nasty. Yeah, that's brutal. Do you like snow? I I like snow for a while. So like when 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 we get the first snow of the year, I'm always really happy and excited. And like the problem is, we will usually get our first snow sometime in October and the snow will not be gone until uh, late April, early May. So, I mean, that's uh, October, November, December, January, February, March. I mean, it, it's usually literally six months of snow. It, it, it's pretty much half the year. So it, it gets really old. That's all I will say. Yeah. I like it for a while, but it gets really old. So I'm kind of curious, does your snow, I, I know there's like just, so like the population is just so much smaller than most places but yeah do you get like i don't know like i just remember in oregon like when it would snow 
the next day it was just everything is just slushy there's trucks pouring salt over everything everything's brown mm-hmm. and mushy like or does everything stay pretty white there because like they just don't really care as much yeah so, so or you can just we... turn into this big mess of just slush it's just gross Oh, I, I know what you're talking about. So we get that in, like, the early spring. So okay. so around, like, April, it starts to warm up, but there's still lots of snow. So we get that then when it's it starts getting really slushy. And the worst is when it, we have, we'll have a hot day. It'll be like, I say hot. It'll be like 50, it'll be like, you know, 40, <laughs> 50. It, it'll be enough that it starts melting. Right? Yeah. And then the next day, it'll drop back down to 20. So you have this slush oh, that and then, then ice. It, it refreezes. Oh, God. that that is the worst. That do you is get like terrible. black ice or whatever? Yes. Well, how how yeah, is that we caused, do. by the way? Is that just I ice? Have, or like, I, I have no idea, truthfully. I is think it's like oil? Like, I feel like it's almost like a mixture. Like I used to think because like there was only black ice. Whenever I hear about that, I'd always see it like on roads. And yeah. I'm like, I wonder if it's like something to do with like cars and... I don't, I don't even it could know. yeah i think i think it's like ice that gets like maybe compacted super duper hard or something like yeah. people driving on it or otherwise i truthfully I, I don't know i guess but it i think it might have to do with that yeah it gets compacted down or something yeah but, crazy but yeah no like when it's like peak winter yeah no it's just it stays white and fluffy now of course like uh you know plows come through and so they f- remove the excess snow if you will um but it, 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 yeah, it doesn't get that slushy kind of stuff until like early spring. So it looks all beautiful and white for a few months at least. It does. I can't imagine Christmas without snow. I, yeah, that'd be so we, weird. I lived in. I mean, I live in Alabama right now. It's like yeah, there's no such thing as snow here. Yep, <laughs> I bet. So it's just like yeah, Christmas is just like oh, it's just it's like 45 degrees out, like or it's just like <laughs> it's like a normal day. Yeah, it's like just weird. Doesn't really feel the same. Yeah. Okay, Cody asks. He has a bunch of things. He has two things, so I'm gonna I'm gonna read them both, and then we'll kind of cover the ones that we haven't fully yet discussed. But he says, okay. "What's it like being one of the most well-known content creators there are for old school? What was it like transitioning from RS3 to OSRS as a content creator? Who were you? Who were your inspirations when becoming a creator? What did it feel like becoming a full-time? Become full-time? What?" did it you feel when deciding to become full-time during college and then you know what let's just cover those ones first this is a lot of questions I okay, didn't realize okay. How many was. <laughs> so uh i guess first and foremost i mean it's crazy to me i i definitely get like a bit of imposter syndrome sometimes where like i you know i guess i i, I objectively right in the in the grand scheme of things like we're not even really close to famous, okay? Fam- famous, I think of Brad Pitt, okay? Like, yeah. something like that, right? <laughs> maybe, maybe within... And and even within the, the Twitch realm, like, the like guys like... Well, I guess Tim the Tabman moved to YouTube. But, like, like a ninja, a, a, a Tim the Tabman, those are famous streamers. You could... Okay, you know, if you say... I'm ob- yeah, I'm objectively famous within the RuneScape category, specifically... Okay, fine i suppose but it's still it doesn't it doesn't feel that way to me like i'm just i just play runescape man like i like it's it's hard to put into words because i just i i don't feel that i i don't i don't feel well known um and and, and it you know when i when i go to things like runefest it's always extremely humbling because then you have people that come up to you and say like oh hey i love your videos and then it, it's it puts a literal physical like wow this is a human being that watches me you know yeah um but it i i i never really have ever felt like popular not not in a way that like oh people don't watch me but i i just don't i just feel like a a dude who plays runescape and i just happen to make videos about it (laughs) it's kind of crazy to sit back and think about that sometimes yeah um the a colossal blessing um and then so I guess that's that's how I feel about being a big content creator. It it it, it never really I guess sets in maybe the reality. Yeah. Uh, what was the next question? Sorry. I, I wanna. Well, he says transitioning from RS three to OSRS, and then one of them was their like the inspirations to become a creator in the first place, like who you watch. Did you have some ad you said? 
Uh, no, no, I just. Oh, okay. No. Um, and then it was transitioning. Well, sorry, and then there was just one last thing of uh, of what you uh felt when you decided to become full time. Okay, so like transitioning, transitioning from RS3 to old school was weird because like I I mostly made old school videos, and I mean this is th there's still a very big stigma, right? Where a lot of old school RuneScape players just hate RuneScape three. RuneScape yeah. three is is the devil, right? <laughs> And so I was still moderately interested in playing RuneScape 3. And so I would occasionally make some RuneScape 3 YouTube videos. But at this point, my channel was starting to grow because of my old school RuneScape content. And so I would post those. And then people would be like, oh, what the hell is this, man? We don't want to see this. <laughs> and so, yeah, like you, there would be there would be big backlash. Yeah. Not like horrible, but like, There's you know. There's always those way... like super loud commenters, though, that just make it known yeah. that they hate this. Yeah, and it would, you know, way more dislikes than my normal videos would get and whatever. And so, part I think part of me not wanting to play RuneScape 3 anymore was like, okay, this clearly just, as a content creator, is just not what people want to see. And and I think it's important to do what you want as a content creator, but at some point you have to be reasonable and be like, okay, this clearly is just not what people want from me. Yeah. Um, And so, that toppled with you know uh, around that time i was getting ready to go off to college and like I, I was just busy i was busy overall and i just didn't really have time to split between the two games anyway so i just made the logical overall decision like okay i'm just gonna stick to old school and every now and then i'll still get like a little i'll get like a little peak of interest in runescape 3 which i'll then you know i'll go look up some youtube videos i'll watch some stuff about like whatever is new and then you know, okay, well, they're, they're, I'm, I'm good again now. Um, they're like satisfied so, your hunger for it. Exactly, exactly. Um, and then, yeah, but like I said, I've talked, I said it a little before, but I really do think PVM wise, RuneScape 3 is fun in its own way. It just doesn't really feel like RuneScape anymore. Like, it, it's very, very different, but it is fun in, in its own way. Um, so, and then what did I feel in regards to going full-time? So, yeah. you know, it was one of those things where, uh, so I guess if you define full-time as doing it as my, you know, main source of income, I guess I did it when I, you know, was like 16. I had, I had a job. This is a very North Dakota thing for me to say, but I had a job working for a local farm. I just kind of did some manual labor stuff, you know, mm -hmm. when I was like a teenager. And I liked that. It was, it was, you know, good old wholesome work, brother. You know, it, it was, it was satisfying Honest for the work. soul, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> and so I enjoyed it. But then I was like, well, you know, I'm starting to make more money from doing this. And I really enjoy it. So like, I may as well just do this as my focus. And, you know, my parent, my parents are older. Um, you know, I'm 24. My dad and my mom are, I think, 64 and 62, respectively. So, like, I have pretty old parents from my age. Mm -hmm. um, and so they they had a really hard time, like, coming around with it at first. Well, because, you know, as a kid, before I made content, I, I played RuneScape like crazy. You know, I, in the summers, I'd play for 10 hours a day or whatever. Plus. And, um, <laughs> you know, they'd always be Emphasis like... Emphasis on the plus. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's be real here. <laughs> And so it would always be like, oh, why, you know, why do you spend so much? It's the classic, you know, why do you spend so much time classic on the computer? Boomers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so they, they, I think justifiably were just concerned. Yeah, You know, absolutely. saying like, make sure you're doing other things with your life. Don't just, don't just only do this. Yep. Um, I think, and everybody that's listening can relate to that if they had yeah. decent parents. I think everybody had parents that at least were they they would at least question why you would play so much yeah. um which is I, I is understandable you know back absolutely. then you might be like absolutely. oh screw you screw you mom but it's a very reasonable thing yeah. like it, and there was yeah. violent video games as well it's like we're like I wasn't allowed to play rated M games like absolutely not and so I had to like sneak yeah. Call of Duty in like you know yeah and I was like yeah. I'm not going to kill anybody I promise like I'm not going to go buy a it's gun just a game mom <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, continue. Um, but so it took them a while to come around on it. And it's not that they weren't like supportive of it. They were just skeptical, basically, which again yeah. is totally reasonable. And then they saw that 
okay, you know, he's been he's been doing this for a long time, and, and now he's actually making money from it. So if it's something he likes, and he's making money, well then, you know, hey, go for it. And then, you know, I, I graduated from high school, and, you know, streaming was, was starting to pick up a little bit, but I was like, well, you know, this content creation can obviously be quite uncertain, so... Yeah. I was like, well, I should at least probably do some college. That's what I did. I, um, you know, I had some scholarships and stuff. So I, I went to a community college and I got my associate's degree, which pretty much just means that I did my generals just because I was like, well, yeah, I should at least do something. Um, and so I, I got my associate's degree, which, you know, means I did my generals, but I didn't do anything specific with it. And then when it was time to transfer over to my bachelor's, I was like, well, <laughs> truth be told, I have no idea what I want to do. I, I really... Even after my two years uh, of getting my associates, nothing is standing out to me in regards to what I'm interested in. So I I suppose it just makes the most sense as of right now. Instead of, well, I'm just going to force myself to go to school and then end up hating it or whatever. Um, I guess it makes sense if I've already got a good thing going. Let's just roll with this for now and see how things go. Yeah. Um, and so that's what I did. And it, it was like a... It was a difficult decision because, you know, in the back of your mind as a con I mean, it depends on probably how popular you are, but like I think as a lot of content creators in the back of our minds, it's kinda like, okay, you know, someday this most likely will no longer work for me, and I'm going to have to have a plan B. It, it I know it's at least in the back of my head, which maybe it shouldn't yeah. be. It might be a little unhealthy at times. But it, it, I think it's also responsible to have a plan B absolutely, you know, in in the back pocket, if you will. Um, so part of me was like, you know, I probably should finish something that I was like, well, see, community college was super cheap, which I, I'm a big advocate. Like if you can, I highly recommend people go to a community college for the first two years because you get the same credits and it's way, way cheaper. Yep. Um, so I'm glad that I did things the way that I did. Um, and then at that point it was pretty much like, you know. I've already got this going. Let's just put a little more time into it effectively was all that changed. Now, I could imagine it would be very hard if I was... Let's say I already had a career and I was like, okay, I'm going to quit and I'm going to do this full-time. That would be horrifying. I can't even imagine. Or or if I, you know, let's say I, at the time, I, you know, when I went full-time, I didn't have a girlfriend or, you know. So it, I could imagine, like... Some of these content creators that get into it as adults, like, you are an adult with a career yep. or a wife, and then you're just like, okay, honey, I need you to trust me. I'm going to... That would be... I can't oh, even yeah. imagine. Actually horrifying. Absolutely. I have... And um, you're married, and so... Yes. You know now I, I'm still single. Like, <laughs> I don't know really what goes on in a serious relationship where there's two partners and like <laughs> i yeah because I, I like i see people that are starting to do streaming and stuff and i also know like personally a friend whose wife is like he wants to stream but he's married and his wife's yeah. against him streaming yeah and it's just like damn like ah like <laughs> that's kind of unfortunate because like it would be it would be tough to not have support yeah, yeah. And it's just like all right um, like he, that's just ruled out you know because he loves his partner enough to just respect well i guess i'm gonna do what, what's best for my family yeah yeah at the end and of the day. so uh yeah it's definitely just starting off when you're single or just you know don't have like for me i was really blessed because i yeah i had like bills to pay and stuff but I was single. I wasn't providing for anybody else. And it was just like, right, right. If so I go, was... if I go homeless, like all I have to do is just go home and go back to my job. Like it's like not right. That yep. It, it's all on me. Yeah. I don't have any other people to worry about per exactly. se. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It, so I, I think that's, that's like I said before, I feel lucky that I, I got started with content creation when I was young because yeah. the less, I think the less responsibilities you have, the easier it is to create content without having unnecessary worry in the mm. back of your head, I guess, you know? Yep. Okay. So I guess that was, that was kind of my experience of going full time. You know, even, even though I was young, it still was like, damn, I hope I'm doing the right thing. Cause you know, I worry about my future. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but... And there is so much uncertainty with content creation and it's just so new too. Like, 
it is in relativity it is such a new thing you know yep. it's a very new career if and you will sometimes i think you know sometimes i think like oh what if i had started content creation when i was like 17 or something rather than 23 and yeah but then i think i'm actually kind of glad i'm older because i have more I don't know. I almost feel like I could have gotten taken advantage of, or I would have done immature things when I was like too right. young. So, yeah, there, there definitely is like pro con. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you can look at some of like my old YouTube videos. Some of the stuff I did was so cringy, and it's like, well, I wouldn't have done that out. But then again, it makes you, it makes you who you are as exactly. a content creator, I guess. And but... it's like people gotta just understand, like you're, you're young. I was a kid, man. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Okay. He he also asks, um, who are the inspirations? of you becoming a content creator initially? So I would say probably, I mean, you know, way, way back in the day before like Twitch was a big thing. I loved uh, Rune Shark. Oh Rune yeah. Rune Shark on YouTube had such, like the, the God Swords F from Scratch series. I just love their content as a whole. Um, and then of course as a kid, well, this is what made me start YouTube in general was um, I watched like uh, So Solid 2K. He did those, uh, max hit videos with like different weapons um then like fat wrecked and uh like there's a guy like, I, I i forget some of the og youtubers from back then um but I, I watched them you know back when i was a kid and i was like oh this is so cool i want to do this and that's what inspired me to start making youtube videos and i like made my first youtube videos ever like when i was like 10 years old and i remember one of them was literally me doing the boss fight from the Swan Song quest. And I put it in Windows Movie Maker and I put the rainbow effect over the entire screen and I uploaded it. Like that was the video. That like, was the whole video. Dude, I used to use Windows Movie Maker to edit stupid videos and I was like 10 as well. And it's like, yeah. it was like a challenge to use every single effect possible to just yep it was like this is like talent you know like if you can utilize every effect like you have a good video <laughs> so like everything was just and then and we had this yeah. like we had this like uh what's it called that music that has a uh, almost like a what's it called like a a watermark on it but it's like in the audio yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. They like a tag. Yeah, like it just like, keeps yeah. repeating throughout the song so that you don't copy it. Yep. I would put no, that, I got you. I would put that music in it, and then I got to the point. I think I was like 11 or 12, where I would literally trim the audio to cut out those little like watermarks, <laughs> and so yeah. it had no rhythm to it. Like the whole song was just painful to listen to because it's like choppy. Every like, 15 seconds, it was just, yeah, just go to another part of the song yeah and i was like this is good like this is good stuff yep this is no great idea. that's yeah. that's my favorite thing about like videos that i used to make and stuff you were just so like un self-aware like you just <laughs> this is amazing and you just like nobody was gonna tell you different like this is fantastic yep literally um um i guess where was i at oh so like that yeah. was my like my my inspiration way back in the day was like you know the og content creators um, and then as far as streaming goes, you know, I, I, I have a very fond memory of watching Paul or, or Foe. Um, when, when rares first came into this game, they would spawn in random places in the game. Oh so, yeah. Like the party hats and stuff you're talking about. Yeah. I remember watching a uh, foe pick up, uh, Halloween masks by chronozone in the edgeville like wilderness dungeon and one spawned and he picked it up and like it was so hype and i was just like man i love this energy i love like the that you can share these moments live with people yeah um so a lot of the you know your household names you know i i started with back in the day like paul and or foe and and bodhi and and mmorpg you know yeah. all all of your big names back in the day i was super inspired by them and i'm still inspired by them to this day you know they all create great content and like you got to give props to honestly i don't think there's anybody that is more consistent with their schedule than curtis he is like, a beast he he's like a freak of consistency it's unbelievable how good he is at like his schedule he's just dedicated the man is just like it's like he has a purpose you know yeah he's he not just, just it, he's not just coasting he's like no nah, like i'm gonna stay true to my schedule and i'm like 
Yeah. And it's his in game too. The dude will just grind out a bomb. Yeah. Well, I guess you're, you know, you know about that, but like he'll, he'll just <laughs> dedicate to a particular thing. I'm really bad about content hopping. Like I'll just, yeah, I'm going to do something totally different today. Cause I feel like it, which I think is, it depends on the person. Like some people need that. It yeah. depends, but no, he's a, he's a total beast. I'll shout him out for days. Cause it's super humble. Just doing his thing, you know? Yep. Absolutely. Like he's in his lane, like just chilling. And uh, yeah. it, that, I got to give him credit because, like, is some people might think, oh, you know, you're just playing RuneScape. It's not it's not hard to go live every day, you know, for nine hours or whatever he does. But I'm like, yeah, dude, that's doing that long term. Yeah, it's like it's like it's a tough thing to talk about. And like, because obviously, you know, you look at it from different perspectives. Yeah. Um, And, and it's important to uh, to not lose touch if you will but like the, the, it is it, it, some days it is difficult like no matter how you might think like oh it's just streaming runescape it's the most easy thing ever you know yeah there's there's like a mental game to it and so it, the, it, uh, it is it's it's not strenuous yeah. in 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 the way that my farm job was in high school it's mentally strenuous yeah. there are some days you get into your own head and it, it's like i i struggle yes. with this sometimes I just, I'll just get like stream anxiety and it's really silly. I've been doing this for years and years. No reason to feel like this. And yet I have anxiety about streaming today somehow. Like, yeah. you know, it, there are, and again, it, it's difficult because it, it's important to stay in touch and be like, there are people that, you know, go through similar things and, and it's, it's harder for them, but that it's important not to just because some people might have it harder. You, you shouldn't devalue your own. Yeah. Yeah struggle and everybody goes through their own stuff so yeah no that's wise i, I just i think like uh yeah because i i worked normal jobs i worked at this metal factory i worked there for 10 hours but like yeah you know just shifts of 10 hours and it's just like you can just turn your brain off you know yeah but yep it's, it's like just, with, it's just work yeah it's like yeah. with streaming it's like you are you have constantly to... under this like you're you have people watching your every move basically and it's just like Yep, it's you you it's that's what I always say like the difference is is let's say you're you know you're having a shitty Monday if you work some office job you can probably show up and just just get through the day you know just yeah. fuck around not really get anything done but like streaming you you have to show up and actually yeah. like you know you have I mean you're going to have a terrible stream if you if you don't like you can show up and just like man but yeah. you know that that's the difference I guess is yeah. it's hard to have just a a day where you aren't into it i guess it, it makes it very hard yeah and of course i'm not saying streaming is hard or anything like no no and that's that, it's that, so yeah, that's hard why it's like i want to be real with it it's like because streaming is a blessing and like we Absolutely. both agree to it and it's just like you're doing what you want to do but you those the consistency is what i'm talking about it's just like damn like every single day it's like you don't miss a day and stuff it's like that's that's what yeah, and that would that, that would be the same thing with like a normal person a normal yeah, person of course. But it's like doing their work and like because even when i worked it's like dude if i could have a day off like oh i take it you know and yeah so those people yeah. that are really just hard workers stuff the same respect goes to them where it's like super consistent with whatever a they're doing. absolutely yeah it's it, it's a tough one to talk about like you say because yeah. it's you, you don't want to sound ungrateful you know exactly. that's the biggest thing but okay how did the whole hill giant meme start i'm curious <laughs> as well you know, I think somebody just came into my chat one day and they were like, bro, you look like a hill giant. And I laughed really hard. <laughs> and like my, you know, my chat thought it was funny. And so that, you know, how it's like some things like that just get such a good reaction out of your chat that it just sticks. Like yeah. Just, I don't know. It, it was just like one dude who was like, man, you kind of look like a hill giant. And then everybody was like, yeah, he kind of right though. You kind of do. And then it just, it just stuck. God damn it. It has just never gone away. So yeah. And, and I, dude, uh, the other day it was so funny. I was, um, I was, I was like doing something on Dead Man Mode off stream, and this guy comes up to me at the Grand Exchange and he says, "You are lost, beast. Go back to your people." And traded me a brass key. And I'm like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, <laughs> Jesus Christ, Damn dude. It. Oh God. Yeah, that that like, that's what I like about you and other streamers is like you just don't take yourself seriously. Like you know. If, I if, think it's really important to not you you have to be so able important. to take a joke. Yeah. And uh yeah, like 
again like i've seen streamers that's just like they take themselves way too seriously like you gotta just understand you're on the internet you're on yeah right and the thing is is like it's not gonna make it any better like as a streamer the more the more you react Resist. to that kind of stuff yeah, it's like it just you... makes it worse <laughs> exactly yeah you have to just go with it yeah okay rills asks what is your um let me try to he says what is your osrs achievement and which one are you most proud of i think he says what is your greatest osrs achievement hmm that's a that's a tough one i don't see i don't feel like i've ever done anything like that crazy achievement wise in osrs um i, I mean think third like age the, is a pretty cool achievement all i mean it's rng so i don't know what he's yeah that i guess that that's what i was gonna say is like i have stuff on my accounts that i'm really proud of but like it's all rng so it's it's all about how you define the word achievement yeah like third age was super cool um i have the inferno pet on iron mammal which i think is really cool because i, I don't know how many iron men have the inferno pet it's like you know i'm sure like a few thousand or whatever that's but it's, goals, so it's a really by the way and i remember the clip really... of you getting yeah it too. see but that's the thing it was 2KC. Can you really call 2KC an achievement? Not, I mean, not really. So I just think it was I, perfect because didn't you, didn't you alk your Infernal Cape or something because of a charity stream or something? Yep. Yeah, I did. And then, <laughs> and then when I got my cape back, I got the pet. So blessed. Like, maybe Literally it was good blessed. karma. I don't know. It was, yeah. it was karma that got me the pet. But no, that was, that was honestly like the third age clip was, you know, nerdgasm. That may be the single most excited I've ever been on this game. Because, like, I, w I was excited in the first place because, like, oh, yo, I got my cape back. And then I saw the pet, and it was just, oh holy, oh, I, I, you know, both at once just hit me. I was ecstatic. That's amazing. So, my, I don't know, my achievements, I feel like, are just RNG. So, it depends how you define achievement, I guess, but. Okay. Um. This is kind of an interesting question. Of, of course, we've already covered some of it, but Marin asks, I remember watching you do Barrows a couple weeks after OSRS was released, and I was so in awe at how much better you were than me. Good memory. Did you think you would get um, to the insane level you're at with content creation streaming? Was it sudden, or could you tell where it was going? Um. So I, I definitely did not like know that it was going to happen or because like i mean even to this day now like i said i just i just feel like i'm just a guy who just plays runescape <laughs> like it, it 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 never really like fully sets in that you know to, to me i just play runescape hang out and it's awesome that people want to watch me yeah um so no when, when especially when i when i first started then especially it was just like oh this is cool i'm just gonna do this for for funsies and then all of a sudden, especially after I got third age, all of a sudden it was like, oh damn, like I'm actually starting to get some decent views on my videos. Like this is actually starting to pick up a little bit. So I guess I, I it was kind of gradual. Um, you know, it, it was a big spike after I got third age. And then after that, it, it was kind of more like gradual growth because I was, you know, consistently uploading progress videos. And um, so... From there, the channel growth on was was consistent, but no. If, if you if you would have gone back in time and told fifteen year old me when old school came out that I'd be doing this, I'd be like, nah, <laughs> there's no way. So it's it's shocking to me, and uh, I mean, as you said, streaming is a blessing. I just, it's it's I I I have like existential moments sometimes where I'm like, bro, it's crazy as hell that I'm like sitting here doing what i'm doing right now like yeah this is actually actually crazy to think about like yeah no especially when you think of just like the sheer just like there's so few, like the percentage of people that can actually make content creation and stuff a thing they can do for their main source of income is it's so right little. it's like yeah it's and, it, and a, lot and... of, a lot of it like i feel like the reason it's so low is because it is really risky you know Oh, it is. It is. It's. It's very inconsistent income, yeah. especially if you're older, you know, and you have bills and stuff. It's. It, it's a gamble. It is. Yeah. So. Yeah. It, it. It's crazy though. I. I never thought I'd get to where I am now, and uh, I try to remind myself constantly that I'm extremely lucky that I. I do get to do what I do. That's awesome. What do you think? Uh, 
about RuneFest. I know we kind of already covered it, but uh, like if there is like, do you plan to go to like every RuneFest that there is and stuff from now on? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I will go to them as long as I possibly can. They are really, really fun. You know, as a content creator, it's it's cool to be able to, you know, hang out with other streamers in person. You know, it's fun to be able to meet them. And, and it's all, that's one of my favorite things about, like, the OSRS streaming community is, you know, I've never been a content creator for any other community. But I just can't imagine there's no way they're like as close knit as we are. Cause yeah. like when we go to RuneFest, it's it's just like a group of buddies that we've all known each other forever hanging out. Like it's it's always really, really fun. Um What are your best then, memories of RuneFest? Because I've never been to one. I'm going to go to the next one whenever it is. And I just So like like the RuneFest portion itself is always cool. It's it's really fun to be in the crowd with the energy when they announce when they announce like Theater of Blood and everybody's super excited. Like it's it's like a, it's like being at a concert almost, yeah. you know, that energy. Um and then my favorite memories <laughs> Okay, so I can't this is hilarious. I can't um impersonate him well so i'll uh, just bear with me but one night it was after you know the rune fest stuff itself was done they just have like a big party you know pretty much the venue's open until like 2 a.m people just hang out yeah so i'm like i'm like standing around talking to people whatever and uh bodhi walks up to me and I, this is my first rune fest i think maybe what second, year is this know. do you think this would have been 2017 i think okay either either, either 16 or 17 okay um Bodie is absolutely gone. Just shit faced, okay? <laughs> and he he walks up to me and he puts his arm around me and I go, What's up, Adam? How's it going? And he turns his head and he looks at me and he's like he's like six inches from my face. So just imagine a big Bodie VV just right in your face. <laughs> and he goes, I I said, What's up, Adam? How you doing? And he goes, Mr. Mel. And then walks away. <laughs> that was it. He, he took that his arm really off and good walked away. By the and way. I was like, I was like, what the fuck was that, dude? I'm like, okay. <laughs> it was it was hilarious. Oh my god. Otherwise, um, this was super surreal. This was my first ever Rune Fest, so I think this was either 2016 or 17. Um, we went so we we got there like a couple of days early this is one of the first times i think jagex had like flown content creators out so they were just they didn't know what to do with us at first um so we were there like a couple of days before the event itself and at the time mod wolf um was still at jagex and he you know of course is really good friends with a lot of you know people at jagex and so we're all sitting at a hotel in uh I think just, it, it was a hotel in, uh, I forget where it was, but we get told that we are going to, uh, Paul Gower's house. Wow. As in like, like one of the Gower brothers. So we go over there and we have a barbecue and hang out and we sit in the backyard of Paul fucking Gower. Like, like one of the founders of RuneScape. Yeah. That was insane. Um, he even, we went in his house and we like looked around and it was the coolest thing. When him and his wife got married, um, they had a seating chart for where all their guests were going to sit. And all of the tables at their wedding venue were named like Varrock, Edgeville, Thalador. Wow. Like, the tables were like RuneScape City. Theme. It was so cool. That's so awesome. cool to see. So that was something I'll never forget. You know, getting to go to his house was like dude like no way i'm actually here right now dude you know? very the gowers are so humble they are I swear like, to god like i watched that documentary i'm just like i think it's andrew gower right he's like the main dude that yeah most of it. yep andrew yeah. gower i just look at him I'm like dude we don't deserve you man like yeah he like you can just tell he was just like passionate and was just like yeah. yeah let's make a cool game and then like just it doing up. his thing like Oh, dude, and it broke my heart when he was, like, you know, there was so much, like, pressure yeah. for him. And, like, you know, he just kind of, like, gave up the the main position, like, CEO or whatever, you know, whatever. Yeah. The main yeah, board of it, directors. You, you feel for him because you, just, you could just tell he cared, you know? Yeah. I'm just like, damn, man, like, you're a good guy. Like, you're just a good human. And you just yeah. make it, made a <laughs> – just one of the most – 
insane games of all time just yep and you, you just I, I guarantee it was just one of those things where they're like oh yeah let's make a game you know this will be fun <laughs> yeah and then like oh it's kind of huge now like holy cow yeah yeah it's insane i don't know do they attend the rune fests most of the time they the yeah they they usually do come i've actually never seen them i've never like talked to them at, at a rune fest before mm. um but they do i know they do show up and i know that they have um i think they've even gone up on stage and like talked they've like you know done speeches and stuff before so that's awesome one day one day hopefully i'll, I'll be able to actually yeah. like talk I, to them i've never been across the uh atlantic ocean so going to a room that was fest will be a yeah a for rune fest treat. that was my first time ever it's it's very cool yeah if you get the chance i'd recommend going if i mean i'm hoping by next year Me they'll too. bring it back so hopefully we'll see um we're getting close to the end uh okay what is your favorite content in game sony is asking that um i really like tob and i i can't even necessarily put a pin on why like like because i i like i like chambers of Zarek as well and you would think i would almost prefer that because there's a little bit more like variety to it because it's not the exact same thing every time but i don't know there there is something about tob that i just really really enjoy um and then my favorite content, like when I was younger, I loved Barrows, and I also loved Dagonoff Kings. I don't know why. I just think DK is really fun as well. So, um, yeah, that's I, I would say at the moment, re really enjoy Tob. Can't necessarily put a pin on why. I just do. And when I was younger, either uh, Barrows or Dagonoff Kings. Yeah, I think I think whatever you did as like a kid is gonna just. Yeah, it's just it's just the nostalgia probably yeah. that makes you go like this is great. But part of my reason why um, I know with Dagonoff Kings was pre EOC, um, they were super good money because uh, Dagonoff Prime drops talismans right, and yeah. water talismans were used to train summoning, and they mm. were super expensive. So and they weren't even that rare. So like between the water talismans and then for some reason dragon axes were like four mil so like like dks were just bank back in the day yeah. and that was like so end much. game pvm too like yeah i mean yeah they, like they were they were challenging they were yeah. you know it was either that or gob wars basically so yeah that's what's crazy to me is thinking of like early release when it was just barrows and dks yeah like it's I, like because i started when zora was already a thing and i think sir yeah. and abyssal sire or maybe did Sire come out later? But I can't even remember because I was I so remember. newbie. God, it's been so it's been so long. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I I think maybe was I'm trying to remember if Cerberus or Sire was first. I think it was Sire, wasn't it? Maybe. I literally don't know. <laughs> I, I can't remember. I, my either. whole my whole knowledge of the game before like honestly 2015 and be and before that I'm just lost. I don't know. Yeah. I think God Wars came out year one, though, right? Like, 2013? Yeah. Yeah, well, because Old School initially released, and it was dying. Like, it it, <laughs> it, it got down to, like, 20,000 players every day. Like, it was yeah. pretty bad. But because there was nothing. Like, it, yeah. it, like you would level up, and then it was, like, Calphite Queen or KBD. And, like, that that was it. Yeah. There was no God Wars. There was nothing to, like, keep playing for, so. It's interesting and how the game was so much more focused on, like, skilling, like, in a way. Oh like, yeah, like you Absolutely. were a beast at the game if you had a ninety nine. Like nowadays, yeah, it's like it was you like, got to have damn. an infernal cape. But like, yeah, and even then, it's just like, yeah, yeah. yeah it, Back then, it, it's it like, is you crazy. Have... Yeah, yeah. We we talk about that on my stream sometimes. It's like just this the skill level of the average player now, and and and, and not even necessarily skill, but the knowledge, yes. the things that people know about this game on average is just unbelievable compared to what it used to be. You know, absolutely. Yeah, it's insane to just think. I even watch, like, old skilling videos of people, like, trying to come out with, like, innovative methods for, like, I don't know. Trying yeah, to come I, out with, I, like, like, the tick manipulation methods back in, like, 2013. It's just, like, it's just so ancient. It's like, you didn't know about yep. this? Like, Yeah. 
I feel the same way if I go back and I watch old, uh, like, PK videos. Yeah. Like, you watch some of these old famous PKers, and it's like, they were so He's bad, like five dude. Tick, they were... Five tick god wards, or, what am I trying to say? Five tick, uh... AGS switches and stuff. Yeah, like, like they, they were just they were just terrible. But you know, back then everybody was terrible, so they were they were good yep. in relativity, you know. Yep. No, it's it's really funny to see those super ancient videos of like <laughs> a guy attacking a guy and he's just maining his AGS or whatever he's Yeah, he's just whacking, <laughs> he's just him, whacking yeah. him. And the guy's just walking just with his arm, just like, what am I watching? Like yeah, like, are, are you why guys, did like, you do that? Are you guys like, do you guys like not have arms or something? Like move, like run, <laughs> like run and like protect yourself, eat. It's just like, nah, they just like are so slow with everything. Yeah. And it, the, it was such a weird thing too, that, um, people would, people would like DM it, it. It was like, it was like bad manners. If you didn't fight somebody to the death, I'm like, why would I just sit here and suicide? I don't even know who you are. Like, why? Why would I? Why would I just let you kill me? Like, yeah. it was the weirdest culture back then. Yeah, no, it def and I knew, uh, like, you basically, like, yeah, there was a lot more, uh, like, integrity, sort of, in a way. Oh, and, like, definitely. You would, yeah. you would definitely say good fight after every single fight and stuff. And oh yeah, it was not much, not much toxicity. I, I don't I really know. I feel like it was me. less, and the toxicity was like noob. <laughs> like, yeah, like, you know. It and was that was like, toxic. Was if you got called a noob, like, jeez. Like, damn, dude, you're going to ruin my day. Come on. <laughs> like, Okay. A cold one. Final topic we'll kind of get into, but he asks, how did Robin fully react to you being a streamer and learning all that's involved <laughs> with it? <laughs> so that was, I think that that went about as well as it possibly could have. I feel like it would have been <laughs> very hard to explain if it didn't go the way it did. So um, I'll just try to summarize as best i can yeah. so when this is back in like 20 like early 2016 okay so i'm at the time i'm in an apartment i am living with roommates i'm living with my brother and another guy and my brother his girlfriend at the time worked with my now wife robin so they went to rob robin and, and my brother's girlfriend they worked together so they went to a concert together and after the concert was over, they came back to our apartment because, you know, my brother's girlfriend lived there with us. So they came back to our apartment and Robin was uh, under the influence a bit. Uh, you had some drinks. And so she was confident and she heard me talking. She heard me in my room streaming, right? So she, she heard me talking and she's like, what's he doing in there? And I think my brother's girlfriend kind of roughly explained it. And so she just like Kool-Aid man fucking, oh yeah, kick my door down. Like, hey, what's what's going on in here? <laughs> so at this point, I'm like, you know, I'm I'm like little 18 year old fucking never had a girlfriend. I'm like, oh no, there's a girl in my room. What's happening right now? Like, I don't know this person. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm freaking out. And my chat just eats it up they start a sub train so i'm sitting here waving this stupid plush banana in front of this girl and i'm like i'm so embarrassed <laughs> so oh embarrassed and it was like she she just thought it was cool like she, i i explained what it was and i even got her to play runescape she this was the craziest thing she had never even heard of runescape before she soloed bandos successfully she she got a bandos kill on my iron man and then like tellied out it was the damn she never even she never even heard of the game i was like okay this is impressive so damn. so literally the first time we had ever met she was fully aware of and even participated in my stream so luckily it wasn't one of those things like hey Let's go out on a date. And then you ask me what I do for a living. And I go, oh, God, there we go. Like, yeah. it, it was just, it was, this is what I do. So, like, there was no questions. There was no, yeah. like, you know, if, if we're going to date, this this is just what I do. Um, And, yeah. So, it was to, to kind of just finish this up. And I'll just tell this part because I think it was really funny. So, again, I'm like, I'm like 18 year old. Never had a girlfriend before. Super awkward. And so, like, we streamed together. You know, it was fun. Uh, there's a really funny clip. I, I I I think I have it saved somewhere. But there is this really funny clip where I left the room to go to the bathroom. And she sat down in my chair. And she looks at my chat and she is reading it. And she just goes, no, I'm not going to show my tits. <laughs> so you just know the God chat was it. just spamming show tits. Like, 
<laughs> just, oh, God. The whole thing was just so embarrassing, dude. Show bobs. Was... That's what it would be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty much. God damn it. And miraculously, anyhow, after that, uh, uh, yeah, we just ended up going out and, and now now i'm married so shit's crazy congrats <laughs> it was a very a very irregular uh like meeting story. yeah i think that's i don't know sometimes uh i feel like young people especially now it's like it, if you're if you're talking to somebody that's like you know under 30 or something like they'll totally understand i feel like the i have this impression that like if i tell people i stream they're gonna be like what like get a normal job because i think of like my parents yeah. or, my, or my like uncles and aunts just <laughs> don't understand Kinda like what, what my parents yeah, have told yeah. like all my relatives because like i have a semi-large extended family right and i'm just like yeah. oh god like because i remember um yeah I, I just remember like my nephew popped into my stream and he like made it known that like it was him that was behind the username and chat and i'm yeah. like I'm like, this is just awkward, dude. <laughs> like, I I, even... I've had it happen too. Yep, I have like Robin's siblings will yeah. watch me, it's and like, like oh, it's God. it's cool, you know. But at it least is, it you is don't weird. have a like a persona, you know. Like, imagine, yeah, you, imagine it... you had just you're completely different. And it's that just would like... be awkward. <laughs> that would be, yeah, yeah, that'd be super weird. Yeah, it's a little weird. Uh, I've had a few friends that see with with me. I started when I was 23, so it was after you know. school. I mean, I I still haven't graduated from college, but like after a few semesters of college and stuff like that, and so when past friends find out about my stream, inevitably, not all yeah. of them have, but like a few select, and they'll pop in, and I'm like, oh god, like, this, yeah, I don't know what you're thinking. Hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I find you just gotta kind of, you just gotta embrace it, you know, not yeah, be embarrassed. Absolutely. Like, you know, this absolutely. is a new thing; it's very popular. You know, if you think absolutely. this is weird, that's on you. You know, adapt. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Okay, I want to wrap things up with you giving three shout-outs to either, well, yeah, basically to OSR as content creators or any other person in the community that you think deserves a shout-out. They don't have to be the top three; just three sure. that come to mind. Okay, um, let's see. First one that comes to mind, um, probably my favorite YouTube content at the moment, bar none, is Guns Chili's uh, In Dead for a Pet series. His editing is absolutely phenomenal, so if you need a series to watch on YouTube, I would recommend checking out Guns Chili. Uh, I, actually, I think his YouTube channel might just be Chili now because he had issues with the guns part, but yeah, you'll, you'll find him <laughs> if you search that. Okay. So. Um, Highly, highly recommend that. Um, Shout out. Otherwise, gosh, it's like it's so. I'm trying to. I'm trying to think of who I should pick. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's tough to pick in particular. Um, you know, I I would say a big shout out to a big shout out to uh, to Foe. You know, I I think Paul is especially if you get the chance to meet him at RuneFest. He is he is literally the dad of the RuneScape community. Not like not only because he is older, right? But he he's very like mature and responsible in like helping people. Like he he will definitely be one to like give you a helping hand if need be. He will he will explain things to you. He will you know he like like I said I, the best thing I can describe him he is he is literally the the dad of the RuneScape community. Um, I would say he's you know probably one of my closest streaming friends. We went we went to each other's weddings. So like you that's know, awesome. That's wholesome. Yeah, so really good experience there. And then otherwise, just shout out to shout out to all my mods. You know, I, I will say it's it's cool to have like streamer friends, but um you know there I have mods that I've known for years and years now. A bunch of them came to my wedding as well, which was super cool. They they flew out and uh you know they th th those are those are the kind of people that, you know, obviously you, you have your regular chatters that you talk to on stream and all that stuff. But like, I have, I have a, a discord that I did with my mods that we, you know, we'll hang out off stream and we'll play games and we'll, you know, so th those are really like, you know, you have these big, yeah, you, you like, most people have their friend group when they're in high school. Yeah. And then when high school ends, you know, life happens, you kind of go your own way. But so like, you know, now 
with all my friends being busy. I don't get to see them as often. You know, my mods are, are pretty much like my friends now. You know, yeah. I get to talk to them about more personal stuff day in and day out. So That's awesome. It's kind of interesting being so, I don't know, like so invested in like these like it sounds like boomer is to say this, but like these virtual relationships where it's like a lot of people you have never met before, but it's like, yeah. it's just as connected. Like you, you feel almost just as connected as if you like you were in person, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Like you can, you can definitely make legitimate, like Long, serious friendships. Friends. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Just online, which is crazy how we work that way with humans. Just, you, I don't know. I feel like we just, we have this deep desire to just connect with each other. And so that. Yeah. No, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Yeah. Mr. Mammal. Whether we're all mine or not, but yeah, it was, uh, it, it was a pleasure, my man. This absolute really pleasure fun. Have, to have you on. It's crazy how fast three hours flies by. It is. I was just going to say, I'm like, oh my God, it's one o'clock already. Jeez. <laughs> it's been three hours, dude. And I'm surprised Time I didn't flies. have to take a single pee break. Cause I always Me have to take like two or three. <laughs> I, I, I was just thinking, I'm like, hmm, I could kind of go for a piss, but hey, we're good. We're, we're yeah. done. We didn't have to interrupt. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jordan, it's seriously, I so much appreciate your time today. And honestly, this was a very, very fun conversation. I felt like, I don't know. We just, I don't know. It's just yeah, easy man. to talk to you, man. It's, it's They're awesome. good. It's, yeah, it's, I had I had a lot of fun too. I I really appreciate you reaching out. I I because I know in the past I had people say like, oh, you should go on the Say Bay. You know the the. I'm like sure. I mean, if I get invited, I'll, I'll people do that. Do it, so. People go into people's rooms like be on the Say Bay cast, man. Like I'm just like, dude, this is it. It's almost look. It almost looks like I'm putting them up to it. Like I swear to God, I'm not putting anyone up to it. They just do that, and I get embarrassed. I was in uh, hmm. I was in uh, Poison Potions stream. Somebody yeah, like I was just in there. And some guys like, when are you gonna be on the Sebae cast? I'm like, dude, it almost looks like I'm putting this guy up to it, you know? You're like, planting just, operatives just in the like, streets. Stop! Yeah. You're, you're you're embarrassing me, man, and him, because he doesn't know what it is, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. No. Well, I definitely knew what it was, and I, I again, I really appreciate the invite because it it was a lot of fun, and I'm always down. It, it it's really it. That's like I said, one of my favorite things about the OSRS community is I feel like the content creators are just a big friend group, like. For yeah. the most part, we all get along. We all Absolutely. interact well. So doing stuff like this is always really fun. Well, thank you again. We're going to have your um, links in the description. Of course, the majority of people listening to me have probably already <laughs> definitely heard of you and probably already followed. But I will have your Twitch, your YouTube, your Twitter. Is there anything else that you would like? No, that, that should be about all, really. <laughs> okay, guys. You don't even have to do that, but thank you. <laughs> no, absolutely. Uh Thank you guys for listening again, total pleasure. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. We do have a J mod coming on for the next Sebe cast. So in the next two days ish, I'm going to post it on Twitter. So very look exciting. Forward to it. Yeah. Thank you again. And peace guys. Thank you. Bye guys.